the eighth time of the last 11 years Brigham Young University has won the Western Athletic Conference Football Championship. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Ty Detmer has spent this season rewriting the NCAA record book and tonight could set the record for single season passing yardage. The Cougars also have revenge on their minds. Revenge for last year's 56 to 14 drubbing by the Rainbows of Hawaii. Revenge for a school record minus 56 yards rushing. Revenge for 10 sacks of quarterback Ty Detmer. It's another year, but it's not just another game. From Aloha Stadium tonight, it's the Rainbows of Hawaii against the Cougars of Brigham Young. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy, along with Bobby Curran. Welcome to our coverage of University of Hawaii football. Tonight, the final game of the 1990 season, Hawaii against BYU. And Bobby, when you talk about BYU, here is a team that is ranked fourth in the AP poll, ranked third in the CNN USA Today poll. They set the standard of excellence in the Western Athletic Conference, and now they boast the Heisman Trophy winner. Well, Jim, a great thing for the Western Athletic Conference, Ty Detmer winning in the award today. A tribute, I think, not only to Ty Detmer, but the entire BYU offense. They've been able to do it against everybody. Extremely precision-oriented. They've got good talent, and they make the most of it. One thing that you have to say about Brigham Young, they have their offensive line back. That offensive line gives Detmer time to throw, and he picks opponents apart. That is what the Rainbows do not want to happen tonight. Last year, the Rainbows winning 56 to 14, a great performance by Garrett Gabriel tonight. It's his last game. He'd like to approach something to go out on. Well, Garrett Gabriel has led the Hawaii offense to much better performances of late. The Rainbows able to put some points on the board. They, too, remember last year's game. They're going to try to get it in gear here tonight on that side of the football. It's the big one. It's the standard of excellence in the whack against the Rainbows. It's the champion against the underdog. The Rainbows against the Cougars. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Aloha Stadium final game of the 1990 season. The Rainbows have been able to win the toss. They have deferred. They will kick off. And there you see the series record, BYU leading overall 11-5. to The series started in 1930. And BYU able in the whack to dominate the Rainbows. They were able to win 10 in a row. They are 9-1 and one in whack overall. Lavelle Edwards in his 19th year, 175 wins, 57 losses, one tie. Third winningest active coach in the nation, Bob Wagner in his fourth year, 29-18-1. Rainbows will kick off, and the Rainbows have not gone to their kickoff mode, at least spread across the field. Now they do break. Stacy Corley, number 21, and Scott Charlton, number 43, deep for Brigham Young, and we are underway. It will go to Corley. Takes it at the five. Corley hit by Joe Sardo, driven out of bounds at the 23. And Jim, special teams should become a big factor tonight. Hawaii has not done as well as they'd like in the kicking game. BYU very consistent in that part of it. It's a way in which Hawaii can rise up and get an advantage if they play well on special. And for the first time on Aloha Stadium turf in a game against the Rainbows, the Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer, 4,869 yards this season. First and 10 for BYU from the 23-yard line. Detmer gives the ball up the middle, carrying is Scott Charlton, the junior out of Idaho Falls, across the 25. Terry Whitaker leads the Rainbows in tackles, making the stop. The backs and receivers for BYU, Detmer, Corley, and the fullback, Peter Tui Pelotu. The wide receivers, Matsuzaki, Boyce, and Smith. Boyce with 72 catches on the season. And that vaunted offensive line, Stevens, May, Bomforth, Kayam, and Fort. In on the play of four, second down and six. The ball just short of the 28-yard line. In motion is Corley. They keep it on the ground, and close to the first down is Peter Tui Pelotu, 5'11 junior, out of San Mateo, California. And David Tanabasa undercut him. The defensive line, David Tanabasa, Keely Calhoun, and Ma'a Tanabasa. The linebackers, Whitaker, Robinson, Odom, and Maeva. On the secondary, Kenny Harper 
Kim McLeod, Mike Tressler, and Tony Panky. McLeod and Tressler are the seniors. They're playing their last game for the Rainbow. Third down and two. So far, Brigham Young has been on the ground. And they have that offensive line that can really outmuscle you. Detmer, first pass. Look in, it is complete first down to Matsuzaki at the 40-yard line. Micah Matsuzaki out of Honolulu in St. Louis. He has played in nine games. That was his 24th reception of the year, and he has gone over 455 yards now in reception. And the Boos greet him here at Aloha Stadium. Matsuzaki getting the start tonight. Much has been made of that in the press. Micah Matsuzaki, the state player of the year for St. Louis. The Crusaders with another state title this year. Typical of their receiving core, though. Precise roots, not the fastest guy in the world. Full house backfield. Now Chris Smith, the tight end, sets up on the near side. Ball is given on the sweep to Charlton. Turns the corner, gets running room out over the 45, close to midfield at the 49-yard line. Tony Pankey coming up from the secondary to make the stop for the Rainbows. And so far, Brigham Young has played smash ball up the middle and around the end. They have thrown only one pass. That was for the first down to Matsuzaki, and they are inexorably moving the ball. They have it at midfield. A BYU able to get out and get on the outside. Not too many people have been able to do that against Hawaii because the linebackers are quick, but that time, time in May, the right side of that Cougar line getting out and making some good blocks. Tui Pelotu and Charlton in the backfield. Matsuzaki to the right. Andy Boyd, 72 catches on the year. He is to the left. First down. Delay. Tui Pelotu to the 45. Hit by Robinson. And Robertson able to drive him out of bounds at the Rainbow 42. Game in the play of eight, second down and two for Brigham Young. So BYU, for all of their passing and all of their touchdowns through the air, they have a very good ground game. BYU on the ground this year, averaging 117 yards per game. So it is there. The ground game is there to be used, and so far here, in the first period with 12.41 left. They have used it, and they have advanced the ball from their own 23 to the Rainbow 42. Second down and two. Double wide receiver to the left. Ball is given up the middle to Ipolotu, and he is driven back. Rainbows get very solid in the middle. Terry Whitaker from his inside linebacker position there to back up the big guys, Ma'a Tanuvasa. And when he can give that run support, the Rainbows become very difficult to get through the middle. So now Brigham Young will change into the game. Comes Matt Bellini, the senior. Matsuzaki also returns to the lineup. Third down and two. They went to Matsuzaki through the air the last time. Third down, about a yard and a half. Detmer to throw. Does so over the middle, incomplete, intended for the tight end. Chris Smith, the ball was thrown wide, and for the first time tonight, the Rainbows may have hurried him. They may have hurried him. Well, Jim, they always tell the defensive guys it's not so much getting the sack, it's getting in and disrupting the rhythm of the offense. That time, you could see Ty Detmer hurried a little bit, made his throw slightly offline, enough to cause the poor interaction and the incompletion. Carl Kaufman averaging 43 yards. A punt will kick to Jeff Seidner. First in the whack in punt returns, 15th in the nation. He has returned 38 for a 12.6-yard average. His longest return of the year, 36 yards. Fourth down. Kaufman waiting for the snap from center. Good hang time. Seidner will let it go into the end zone. And the Rainbows will begin at the 20. 11.49 left to play here in the first period. And for the first time, the Rainbows will be on offense. So the Heisman Trophy winner, one for two so far in this game, as BYU in their first possession, elects to go on the ground. Now the Rainbows will try to answer back, and Garrett Gabriel will come out to lead it in his last game, a fifth-year senior. He had 440 yards and four touchdowns against BYU in 89. It is his career performance. It is the best that he has ever done. First down for the Rainbows, triple wide receiver to the right. First down from the 20. In motion is Seidner. Gabriel to throw on first down. Looking for Seidner. Throws long up the middle for MacArthur. It is overthrown at the 50. They use Seidner as a decoy, 
and they took the slot back MacArthur and they sent him up the middle and he was running free with the ball overthrown. The backs and receivers, Farmer will start at running back, MacArthur and Seidner in the slots, Derek Branch and Larry Conn Smith are the wide receivers. That offensive line, and it has been patched up, Ching Viliamu, Kaayali'i, Violete, and Robinson. Second down and 10 from the 20. Same offensive formation. And again, Seidner goes in motion. Gabriel looking to Seidner. Throws. He has running room. He's at the 25. Seidner, great move. Gets the first down. Jeff Seidner, just amazing. We mentioned in the past, Jeff Seidner is most effective when he can make you stand still. You, the defensive player. This is what he does this time, and it's a beauty. Takes the little flare, and this is the idea is to let Jeff Seidner make something happen. See him come to a stop. He stops Brian Mitchell, and he gets the extra three yards. That was the difference between the Rainbows getting the first down and not. Chad Hansen, the linebacker on the inside, on the right side, made the stop for Brigham Young. First down for the Rainbows. Tip a wide receiver again to the right, the wide side of the field. Kept by Gabriel. Pitches back. With it is MacArthur. First down at the 40. MacArthur to the 45. The defensive line now for Brigham Young. Mark Smith, Pete Harston, and Rich Kalfusi. And then the linebackers, particular attention to Alima Fiti Samano. He was on the 1984 National Championship team. He is still there. Rocky Beagle also will be a factor tonight. And the secondary, Crutchfield, Mitchell, Dixon, and Derwin Gray. Gray leads the Wacken interceptions. He has six. First down for the Rainbows at their own 44. Gabriel looking. Has time. Throws. It is incomplete. Thrown high to... Derek Branch, Branch working on Mitchell. Rainbows had great success against Brian Mitchell last year. Mitchell, the defensive back, the senior out of Waco, Texas, four interceptions this season. There you see Bob Wagner. Wagner knows that a victory tonight over BYU would really be a feather in the not only his cap, but the Rainbow program's cap because they will have then been able to beat the most prolific passer of the season. Should Deffner get 233 yards tonight, he will set an NCAA record, most yardage in a season. Second down, flare pattern. MacArthur trying to turn the corner, can't do it. And they able to whack him to the turf. Alima Fiti Samanu did not give up on that play. And the 24-year-old senior out of American Samoa with 11 sacks on the season, able to stick with MacArthur and drive him to the boundary, third down and 10. Well, Fiti Samanu played a couple of seasons in high school at Campbell High School before going back to Samoa. He is their rush linebacker, very quick, runs the perimeter well. As the coaches like to say, he's very good in space. A very agile kind of guy. He's got great speed. 10 28 left, first quarter, no score. Double wide receiver to the near side, MacArthur and Con Smith, third down and 10. Gabriel looking. Now throws, MacArthur. One handed catch at the 29. Jim, I was talking to some of the defensive coaches for BYU down in the field, and they mentioned one of the guys we're glad is graduating is Dane MacArthur. That guy kills us every time we play you. He's their most consistent guy. Only had half a step, but it's good for 28 yards. Watch Dane MacArthur with the lead hand. The right hand is going to keep his eye on it. The great concentration. That's a MacArthur trademark. Now the Wingo's getting serious on this drive. They have it inside the 29-yard line of Brigham Young. First down. Simple wide receiver for the left. Heffernan has come in as a slot back. Audibleizing at the line of scrimmage now is Garrett Gabriel. Gabriel pitches to Seidner, trying to get outside. He's at the 30, and they will... Well, he gets back to perhaps the line of scrimmage. I thought they'd have him for a four or five-yard loss. Darren Gray finally gets a part of him along uh, with the linebacker, Alema Fiti Samanu. Well, getting to the edge very quickly, you're going to see number five, Derwin Gray. Watch him in the back of the screen, keeping his eyes on Seidner. Doesn't bite on the move, stays with him. He's responsible. The guy that gets on the outside, the containment guy, has got to do a good job on Seidner. He cannot allow Seidner to make him miss. Second down and 11. So far, the rainbow line has given Gabriel time to throw the ball. He has used the roll to his advantage. Second down and 11 from the 30. Gabriel fakes the flare. Throws long. It is Seidner. Cannot hold on at the 12-yard line. Uh, check that. Con Smith, not Seidner. Con Smith. Tony Crutchfield covering on the play. 
So Larry Conn Smith, who comes in to this game with 15 catches for 363 yards, a ball thrown in his vicinity, had his hands on it, but could not bring it in for the reception. Well, Crutchfield did a nice job in man coverage that time, closing on Conn Smith. And Conn Smith, though, is able to get his body in position. Very nearly came up with the big grab. Branch to the left, Conn Smith to the right. Slotted inside of Conn Smith is MacArthur. On the wing to the right, on third down and 11, is Seidman. Gabriel looking up the middle. Now throws. MacArthur! Touchdown! MacArthur from the slot position straight down the hash had a linebacker on him he gets behind zone coverage and gets straight back and makes the catch a linebacker leaves him in the zone no safety there to pick him up they were outside wide of the hashes Dane MacArthur right open Garrett Gabriel on target and 20, you're right Jim the offensive line is giving Gabriel time 23rd touchdown pass of the year for Gabriel and to try the extra point is Zarin Khan and he pumps it through. Rainbows lead 7-0. Nine minutes, 19 seconds left in the first quarter. Garrett Gabriel, a second-team all-whack performer in his own right, very excited about this game, has been up for it since he was watching Hawaii go against BYU in high school. He's getting to play himself, think he's pumped. Very excited young man at the quarterback spot for the Rainbows tonight. Eric Gabriel, uh, touchdown pass. That is his 45th career touchdown throw as a Rainbow quarterback. For Gene MacArthur, his eighth touchdown reception. Kickoff will go to Corley. Takes it on the nine. Corley in trouble. Well, you see the scoring drive by the Rainbows. Nine plays, 80 yards, two minutes and 36 seconds. A lap time, 29 yards, a scoring pass. Two running plays and seven passing plays on that drive. Tackle made by Dean Nakagawa and Keone Kilby. Detmer, the Heisman Trophy winner. His team now behind seven to nothing. Early on, 9-13 left to play in the first quarter. And its game is everything everyone expected it to be. First down from the 20. Boyce to the near side. Boyce goes in motion as they overload the receivers on the right. Detmer takes the play action. Detmer slips away from trouble throws for Boyce. Great catch. Did he have it? They say he did. Rainbow coaches can't believe it. Was he out of bounds? Oh. That's a remarkable effort on Detmer's. On Detmer's he's good, rolling away. Gets out of pressure. Abel. And there's the foot down. If, Hard to tell if he's got possession as he's juggling his back is to us. If he did have possession, the foot was down. If he's bobbling it, he's out of bounds. I'm not sure the official, though, was in a position to see that one. Got to love the way Detmer, though, avoids pressure, stays cool, and puts the ball on the outside arm of the receiver. 73rd catch for Boyce this season. First down at the 35. Detmer starting to go to work through the air. Detmer to throw again. Detmer does throw for Smith. Incomplete. Smith covered by Whitaker. Detmer takes the hit, and good pressure by the Rainbows, Mark Odom, and also Achille Calhoun. Odom, number 56, and a Calhoun, and Calhoun, number 98. Well, Jim, Rich Ellison, the defensive coordinator for the Rainbows, said he has put the kitchen sink in this week against BYU. They are going to be blitzing from every conceivable angle. They're going to put way more in than they've put for the sum of, of some games, of some games combined. They're re really going to go with a different look defensively to try to confuse Detmer. Double wide receiver now to the right. Blitzing is Maeva. And he made him hurry. Pass was incomplete. Well, Jim, nobody touched David Maeva. He came around the right side. And not only does he get some pressure on Ty Detmer, he was also able to put a lick on him and maybe make Ty Detmer think a little bit about where are these guys coming from. Matsuzaki, 82, and Matt Bellini, number right, go into the game for Brigham Young. Third down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Matsuzaki comes to the near side, picked up by McLeod, voice to the far side. He is watched by Kenny Harper.
Detmer, three-man pattern. Now four-man pattern. Chris Smith, first down. Gets by Robertson and is upended by Harper on the sideline. And Smith, that time, the tight end going in motion. And the big guy brings it down. 6'4", 230. He's out of La Cunada, California. His 65th reception of the year. He came into the game with 1,100 yards. Chris Smith has such good speed for his size. Not the greatest blocker. Don't have to be in the BYU offense. They think he's the guy that might be able to play the H-back position in the NFL. First down. They have the ball at Rainbow 46-yard line. At the Rainbow 46. Maeva showing blitz again. He does. Ball is given up the middle. Carrying the ball is number 22, Mike Salido. And Salido, out of Union City, California, able to get the ball inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. And it will be second down, six and a half to go for Brigham Young. 8-13 left to play in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Rainbows, 29-yard scoring pass from the quarterback, Garrett Gabriel, to the receiver, Dane McArthur. Detmer now three for six, 47 yards. Gabriel has tied a UH record for 10 consecutive games and throwing a touchdown pass. Second down. Detmer, quick drop, throws. It is complete to Matsuzaki. Matsuzaki curls back and gets to the rainbow 31-yard line. And the boos start again. Tony Panky and Kenny Harper there to make the start. Matsuzaki, a 4-6 speed kind of guy in the 40, but he runs the very precise routes. You can see he's smart here, reeling on Harper, trying to get the extra yards. You know, the BYU people say he may well be their fastest receiver at this point of the season. Detmer has thrown for 38 touchdowns this season, 24 interceptions. He averages 442 yards a game in passing. Smith coming out of the backfield in motion. Three-man pattern. Throws to Smith. He has it, and he has rolled out of bounds. Boy, really a mismatch in there. Whitaker having to take him on. Smith at 6'4", uh, 230. And Terry Whitaker at 5'11", 195. Very close to the first down at the Rainbow 21. In some ways, Jim, the Rainbows are as suited to playing BYU as anybody. They like to go to the backside of the backfield. Bellini, of course, hurt, but we'll see Stacy Corliss in that role. And then, of course, Chris Smith. The Rainbow linebackers run well enough that BYU doesn't get a mismatch in that situation. Second down, about a foot for the first down. Corley and Salido in the backfield that is given on a sweep to Corley has the first down and the Rainbows usher him out of bounds at the 19. 7 17 left first quarter 7 nothing Rainbows but now Brigham Young threatening I want to remind everyone at the conclusion of tonight's game Bobby and I will be selecting the GTE Hawaiian Tell most valuable rainbow the University of Hawaii's general scholarship fund will receive a $100 cash award in the name of that player from Hawaiian Tell. so Stacy Corley now comes out Salido goes into the backfield along with Matt Bellini. Double wide receiver to the left. Detmer, the blitz, they pick it up. Throw to Boyce, wide open at the 15, dances to the 10, to the 8, to the 7, and he is ushered out of bounds by Pang Key. So Boyce has BYU knocking on the door and credit the offensive line of Fort, Baumforth, Stevens, May, and Kayam. They were able to pick up the rainbow blitz. A well, voice able to get himself open, just a little out pattern. Waits, sees that Detmer's in trouble, breaks it out very quickly, and then Boyce, their leading receiver, will get it done all on his own, gets to the outside. Another guy that's not a speed merchant, but shifty and deceptive. First and goal to go. Boyce to the right, Matsuzaki to the left. Toledo and Corley in the backfield behind Detmer. Corley. Harley dives to the three-yard line. Second down, goal to go. David Tanovasa and David Maeva there to make the stop for the Bulls. 6.55 left to play in the first quarter. Well, Stacy Corley is the guy that's participated in some whack track meets. He is extremely fast. A dash man ran the 100 and the 200. He is a guy, if he gets to the corner on you, really presents a problem for the defense. Brent Nyberg is coming for the game number 29. He is flanked to the right. Full house backfield. Chris Smith coming out of the backfield into the end zone on a pattern. They throw to him and drilling the ball to Smith. It was high. Smith claiming interference on Maeva, and he doesn't get it. 
either Whitaker or Maeva on that last play. We'll get another look here. Chris Smith going to go right to the goal line, make the quick cut. There's a little bit of a bump with uh, Terry Whitaker right there. Did look like Whitaker might have been draped, and the official says no flag. And also there was a push by Smith, according to the replay, pushing off on Whitaker. Could have gone either way. Third down goal to go for Brigham Young. Matsuzaki to the far side. Matt Zundell is one tight end. He is to the right. And Chris Smith, the other tight end to the left. Voice is wide to the left. Single setback for Lido. Detmer, great fake. Detmer will score. So Ty Detmer, the Heisman Trophy winner, scores a touchdown on his own. Well, Jim, this is the naked bootleg, and the guy who gets fooled is Terry Whitaker. He buys the fake. He's not in your screen now. He was there, turned around, and took a receiver. He might have been able to make the play, but another example of how Ty Detmer will take whatever you give him. And to try the extra point to tie the game now, number 86, Carl Kaufman. Detmer, 6 for 10, 82 yards, and one run for two yards and a touchdown. The kick is good, and we are tied at seven with six minutes and 22 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Here's another look at Ty Detmer and his touchdown scamper. When he fakes this handoff, now he's got the ball tucked away. Gavin Robinson, number five, he's fooled. Terry Gwinnerker turned around on Chris Smith. He's also fooled, an easy six for the Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer. Scoring drive for a... Brigham Young, 12 plays, 85 yards, Detmer's three-yard run. That seals it, and it's six, with 6.22 left to play in the first quarter, we are tied at seven. Carl Kaufman will kick off, Larry Conn Smith, number 86, and Jeff Seidner, number 26, deep for the rainbow. Kickoff will go to Seidner at the four. 30. 40. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Excellent return by Jeff Seidner. And Tackle made by John Christensen. Seidner able to afford the Rainbow's good field position. You'll hear Bob Wagner talk all the time about field position. Doesn't want to see the Rainbow's in the shadow of their goalpost. You can get out to 35 to 40. That's where you want to start to run the spread offense from. 36-yard return. Triple wide receiver in tandem. In motion back toward the inside, number 28 is MacArthur. First down from the 41. Gabriel throws long up the sideline. Bumping going on, incomplete. He wanted Branch. Mitchell right with him. It'll be second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Rainbow showed a lot of movement to the right. And they tried to go deep again against Mitchell up the far sideline. Mitchell has become the Rainbow's favorite defensive back. Oh, Brian Mitchell, a good defensive back, talking to some of the BYU coaches before the game, they said that was probably his worst game of the season last year. Had some personal problems that were distracting him. They're real happy, and they feel he's their best man coverage guy at this point in this season. Second down from the 41. Gabriel looking with time. Throws. It is complete to Conn Smith at the 40. At the 30. Conn Smith out of bounds at the 23. Smith and Gray, Gray finally made the tackle, but Smith was covered, and he was able to wrestle the ball the ball away from the defender. And then it became a foot race. Well, Larry Conn Smith breaks a pattern outside, and you're going to see a little bit of a gamble. You come up and try to strip, you miss, and then Conn Smith in a foot race, and only Derwin Gray, with the angle, able to bring Conn Smith down. 36-yard pass play for the Rainbows, and now the Rainbows have the ball inside the 25-yard line of Brigham Young. Branch to the far side, and Mitchell picks him up. Seidner also to the far side. He is picked up by Tony Clutchfield. Ball is given up the middle to Farmer. Farmer at the 15. Well, Jim, we've seen occasions this season where the Rainbows will start out. First two or three plays go to Jamal Farmer up the middle. Tonight, they've disdained it. Now they go to Farmer, and by the time they've got BYU thinking the outsides, the perimeters, Farmer gets a good block from Sean Ching, and up he goes into the middle. Garrett Gabriel, third in whack passing, five for nine on this game, 104 yards and one touchdown. Second down, two and a half to go. The ball is at the BYU 15.
Gabriel to Heffernan at the 10. Heffernan leaps to the six yard line. Tom Heffernan, the junior out of Haula and St. Louis School around the left side. And he showed some fine power running. Heffernan also a member of the University of Hawaii baseball team, Rocky Beagle from Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. Number 45 there to possibly save a touchdown for Brigham Young. First and goal to go for the Rainbow. Rainbow offense coming in every color right now. The option, running the short patterns, the deep ones, they're really mixing it up. French and Con Smith are the wide receivers. In motion is MacArthur. Gabriel gives the ball to Farmer. Farmer to the three. Second down, goal to go for the vote. We are tied at seven. Four minutes, 42 seconds left to play. We're in the first quarter. A magnificent ending so far to the 1990 season. Rainbow's trying to play for a winning season. They do not want to end up six and six, but they have to beat the number four team in the country. The team that now boasts the Heisman Trophy winner. Branch to the left, Con Smith to the right. Single setback is Farmer in motion, goes Seidman. It is Farmer, diving for the end zone. Will they give it to him? They do. Watch the offensive line for the Rainbows up front. They just give it the simple dive play. There's a nice hole. Farmer lowers the head and towers his way across. Rainbow offensive line doing the job thus far tonight. The Ayaliki, Violetti, Ching, Filiamu, and Sean Robinson. They really drove back the defensive line of BYU that time. Rainbows now lead 13 to 7. And to try for the extra point is Aaron Khan. He drills it. 4.09 left to play, first quarter. Rainbow 14, BYU 7. Well, you see the scoring drive for the Rainbows, who now lead 14-7. to It was set up with a 36-yard kickoff return by Jeff Seidner. That gave the Rainbows excellent field position at their own 41. And the six plays, 59 yards, four running plays, two passing plays. The seventh touchdown rushing of the year by Jamal Farmer. Rainbows now lead at 14 to 7, 409 left in the first quarter. Number 21, Stacy Corley, and number 43, Scott Charlton deep for BYU. Kicking off Sal Velasco. It will go to Corley at the 10. Corley to the 26. He is ankle tackle there. Richard Stevenson, number 33, in on the tackle, along with Greg Chistakov. Chistakov, one of the seniors playing his last game for the Bows. And every time you see Detmer, another name comes up, Heisman. And the Western Athletic Conference must be very proud of Detmer. I mean, if they would have given it to another player today, if they would have given it to the Rocket, it would really be a kick in the teeth for the West because all of Detmer's number would not have meant much at all. And the whack would have been considered an also-ran conference. Ball is given to Salito. Chase from behind, still on his feet. Great run. Out from the 26 to the 29. It may not have gained an excessive amount of yardage, but Salito's determination. Breaking tackle. Akili Calhoun and Mike Tressler finally wrap him up. Well, Salito, watch the leg drive. He never stops until he has to see the look pull the feet keep the legs churning until you're down there's still hope one thing that goes well for the rainbows they're getting excellent penetration past the BYU front line second down and seven Charlton and Tui Pelotu in the backfield in motion is boy Detmer looking throws it is intercepted intercepted by Harper Harper to the 32 yard line for Kenny Harper that's his first interception of the year for Ty Detmer, that is interception number 25. Well, Rich Ellerson, the defensive coordinator, pointed out a couple things to me, Jimmy. He said, this is what we got to do. We got to put pressure on him. We got to disguise the pressure. And we got to catch the ball if Ty Detmer throws it to us. They do it right here. Harper steps in in front of the receiver, Nady Valdez, goes up, makes the catch, and advances it. First down for the Rainbows, an excellent opportunity. The ball just outside the 31-yard line. Branch to the left, and Jeff Brantley. Brantley, one of the seniors, playing his last game for the Rainbows. He is flanked to the right. Gabriel, short drop. Throws, 
for Seidner. Off his hands and boy does Seidner take a hit. He takes a hit from Darren Gray. Seidner really exposed. He had his body out flat trying to catch that ball and watch the hit he takes from Gray. Well, actually, the ball very well thrown, but talk about getting your bell rang. The thing you got to like about Jeff Seidner, we've seen him take some of those smacks this season, jumps right up, back to the huddle. Second down for the Rainbows at the 31-yard line. And you talk about protection. Gabriel didn't drop back at all. He just stood there. Gabriel keeps. Gabriel in trouble. Trying to run away from trouble. He is at the 30-yard line. Gain of one. That'll bring up third down and nine. Rocky Beagle, helmetless. Give him a stop. We're going to get a look right now at what they call the mess, Jim. And that's when the quarterback sticks it in the fullback's belly, then he makes the decision, is he going to leave it there or pull it out? Well, Farmer wants it, but Gabriel wanted to pull it back out. Then he finds himself with no relationship with the pitch man. Garrett Gabriel makes the best of a bad situation. Derek Branch and Larry Consmith are the wide receivers. Branch to the left, Consmith to the right. MacArthur slotted inside of Consmith. On the wing is Seidner. Third down and nine. Gabriel rolling with time. Has all day. Throws long. It is complete to MacArthur at the four-yard line. We get a look at Gary Gabriel rolling out, spots MacArthur inside and out. MacArthur is going to be able to get on the outside. He turns around Josh Arnold. That's the move. MacArthur has run that pattern so well. Inside out, the post corner, and Gabriel able to put the ball right on the money. They put the ball at the three-yard line. Farmer, Stevenson, and Frank Sean Abru come out in the power eye. Farmer 43, Stevenson 33, and Abreu 40. Farmer, knifing for the end zone, very close. Gabriel now 6 for 11, 131 yards and one touchdown. And MacArthur playing his final game, four catches, 83 yards and one touchdown. And the Rainbows are one yard away from taking a 20 to 7 lead in this game with 2.04 left to play in the first. And the Bows want the crowd to carry it in with them. Now Gabriel wants them to quiet a bit. Farmer, touchdown. But we have a penalty flag. There may have been movement. It could be against BYU. Offside, BYU, touchdown. Rainbows are doing a sensational job up front, getting low, getting off the ball, and firing out. They're opening up enough of a hole for Jamal Farmer to tuck it inside and take it into the end zone. Rainbows functioning on all cylinders offensively to this juncture. By Martua. Touchdown, good. Five yards on the kickoff. They will penalize uh, the Cougars on the kickoff. Rainbows lead 20 to 7 with 143 left to play here. In the first period, Rainbows lined up to the left. Sometimes they snap the ball, go for two. They do not in this case. Darren Khan in to try for the extra point out of the hold of Walter Santiago. Le Mortua snaps, Santiago places. Darren Khan kicks. We look at the scoreboard, 143 left to play in the first quarter. The Rainbows of Hawaii, 21. The Cougars of BYU, 7. 31 yards following the interception by Kenny Harper, his first interception of the season. And the Rainbows take it in in five plays, three runs and two passes. You get a look at it from the side right here, an encroachment penalty on BYU. And there's Farmer getting low, following the right tackle, gets right into the end zone. You gotta love the way the Rainbows are mixing it up offensively. The goal line offense, very effective. Farmer now in rushing, five carries, 14 yards, and two touchdowns. As a side note to this, BYU's uh, tight end Chris Smith, number 94, has 1,136 receiving yards. That is a new NCAA single-season record. I should say that is a record for uh, a tight end. There you see the scoring drive. Corley and Charlton again deep for Brigham Young. Rainbows with a 21 to 7 lead over BYU. 
And Velasco will kick off for the Bulls. The Bulls special teams have played extremely well on these kickoffs. Rainbow's kicking off for the fourth time here in the first quarter. Corley from out of the end zone. Corley at the 12. Stevenson hits him. Sardo finishes him off. Well, Jim, rainbows are pumped right now. Very emotional. One question for BYU coming into this game. They spent a lot of motion down at the Princess Kaiolani today when they were waiting to see would Ty Detmer win the award. Their whole team out by the pool for an hour and 15 minutes in the hot sun. You've got to wonder, with all that emotion spent, could they get it back three hours later? Right now, it looks like the rainbows way more pumped up than are the Cougars. First down for BYU. The ball just at the 13. Detmer to throw. Does throw long. He wants Nyberg. Harper intercepts again. Harper is down at the 45-yard line. Harper not fooled at all. He is way out ahead, had a beautiful read on it. Nyberg, not with nearly the chance to catch it that Harper had. Kenny Harper with his second interception, really showing the good hands tonight. Rainbows with the ball at their 46, following the second interception of the game by Kenny Harper. Here come the Bulls. Gabriel already has thrown for over 130 yards in this game. He had 440 last year. Gabriel with time. Throws long. He wants MacArthur. Off his fingertips. Good coverage that time by Josh Arnold. Boy, the Rainbows want big chunks and they want them quickly. Gabriel takes a hit, helped to his feet by his teammates. Okay. 122 left first quarter, 21 7 bow. Many coaches feel the time you get after a defense is right after a big play, a turnover, strike quick, get them when they're not ready. And McCarthy was able to beat Josh Arnold, the big play in the last touchdown drive. They come right back to the well. Now, the Rainbows have BYU thinking deep. Let's see if they go with a run here. Single setback is Farmer. It is kept by Gabriel. A reverse to Con Smith. He's in trouble. Con Smith looking for running room. Gets away from Kyle Fusi. Gets the block from Seidner. And gets back to the 44, a loss of two. Shad Hansen finally tracked everything down. Well, you had to be a detective on that play. Well, Larry Con Smith came around, gets the handoff on the reverse, and says, uh-oh, I got a white jersey planted right in front of me. He decides to change direction. And so often, in that kind of a play, you'll see a clip, maybe a holding penalty, because the linemen confused. They don't know where it's going. Now the Rainbows have them thinking deep. They also have them thinking wide. All part of the chess match that goes up between the coaches. Branch is flanked to the left, and Brantley in the game now. He is to the right. Heffernan on the wing. Gabriel looking for Seidner. Throws for Seidner. It is complete. 25 out of bounds at the 21. Are you going to watch Jeff Seidner? He's going to head right down the hash. He'll make the quick move to the outside. Cougars are back there in zone. Derwin Gray can't get there late. They'll close with the ball right on the money. Irvin Lee might have almost gotten a fingertip on it, but it's Jeff Seidner with a 35-yard reception and a gain, and Rainbow's knocking once again. Seidner, you see 47 yards already in reception. The ball just inside the 22. Ball is kept. Pitch back. This is McCarthy. Gets the block. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Waiting for the snap from center for the extra point. It is kicked perfectly. 
Rainbow 28, BYU 7. We are still in the first quarter with 16 seconds left. And for Dane MacArthur, he has been able to score his first rushing touchdown of the season on that pitch, 21 yards. Jim, the Cougars were worried about Dane MacArthur, but as a receiver, here you're going to watch the option run to perfection. Gabriel waits till the last second, keeps the relationship with MacArthur, and then watch the cutback. And Dane MacArthur run the ball, you bet again. Gets the block from his backfield mate, Jamal Farmer, to spring him into the end zone. And you have to remember that Dane MacArthur suffered the concussion last week against Colorado State. He is back 100% this week. Rainbow's right now thinking maybe they should have they should have rang Dane MacArthur's bell maybe about every Thursday. <laughs> 16 seconds left in the first quarter. Still early on in this game. One thing to remember, here is Ty Deckman, the Heisman Trophy winner, and we are not really rubbing it in. But when you carry the burden of the Heisman, you've got to perform. In his last three passes, he is 0 for 3. He has thrown two interceptions. And those two interceptions have been turned into rainbow scores. Corley and Charlton again deep. 16 seconds left. First period. Sal Velasco kicks off for the fifth time to the rainbows. And it is Corley at the 12. Corley eludes one rainbow paratrooper. And that was Heffernan. Gets it out over the 20 or over the 30 to the 32-yard line. So you see the scoring drive, 40. Well, actually, it would be 54 yards. One minute and 13 seconds. MacArthur with a 21-yard run. 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Detmer has not yet passed for 100 yards. And he comes in with 23 straight 300-yard games. And the Rainbows are beginning to drive him crazy. Again, the full house backfield. Chris Smith comes out of the backfield. Detmer gives the ball to Salido. And Salido out over the 35 to the 36-yard line where he is ankle tackled by Lewis Randall, I believe, 51. It was Randall. And that's the end of the first quarter. The end of the first quarter, Rainbow fans look joyfully at the scoreboard. Hawaii, the underdog, leads the champion 28-7. Rainbow's only with an advantage of two, but it's the passing yards, I think, that jump out at you. 166 for the Rainbow's over twice as good as the Cougars. 224 to 124 in total yardage, and the turnover's the other big factor. Two for the Cougars and none for the Rainbow's. 28 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. Even the Rainbow's look a little shocked at their success. But remember, they cannot let down a bit because Deppner is one of those passers that can bring his team back in a hurry. Deffner to throw. Four-man pattern. Throws over the middle. Complete to Smith. And let's see. Did he have possession? They say incomplete. Takes a hit by Pankey. Tony, now, Tony Pankey is 5'8", 175. And he's going up against Chris Smith, 6'4", 230. Watch this hit. You're going to watch him get the helmet right in the back of Chris Smith. Smith didn't know what hit him. Tony Pankey considered one of the great hitters. You take that helmet in the small of the back, and you'll drop whatever's in your hands. Boy, that was almost the third turnover for Brigham Young. Pankey, the junior, started his football career at Linfield before transferring to the University of Hawaii. BYU and third down conversions, three for four. The Rainbows, four for four. Third down and five. Bose blitz. Detmer throws long for Nyberg. It is incomplete. Harper there again. Well, Jim Ty Detmer took a hit as he released that. He doesn't look quite right coming off the field. He almost looked a little woozy there for a second. Great defensive play by Kenny Harper. He is really going. Gets right up over Nyberg. The perfect timing. Now we'll watch the hit as Manley Williams puts a lick on Detmer. That was right in the helmet. Detmer a little woozy as he came to the sideline. Detmer 6 for 14. Two interceptions, 82 yards. Fourth down. And Brigham Young will have to give it up. Hoffman gets the snap from center. And deep is Jeff Seidner. Seidner takes it at the 27. Seidner has a hole. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. Penalty flags have been thrown. And Seidner to the 46-yard line of Brigham Young. But wait a minute. They have penalty flags. It could be a clip. 
And that's exactly what it's going to be. Referee signaling through it right after Frank Sean Abreu threw a block early down in the play. And this one's going to come back. 37-yard punt and a 26-yard return. Clipping against the Rainbows. The referee for tonight's game, Gene Wirtz. 14-35 left to play in the first half. Rainbows with a big lead. I can't. Ty Detmer in this game now. Six for 14, 82 yards, two interceptions. He is 0 for his last five. Two interceptions and two rainbow scores. Rainbows lead 28 to 7 just into the second quarter. And the rainbows have now uh, scored four times on their last four possessions. 14:35 left to play in the first half. First down for the Bows at their 17. Gabriel flares it out. This is Jeff Seidner. Seidner is dumped back at the eight-yard line by Fiti Samano. Well, Fiti Samano made the right decision. He came after Jeff Seidner. He doesn't stop and stand still and wait for Seidner to put a move on him. That's the way you got to play Jeff Seidner because he'll have you leaving your shoes on the turf. He comes right in, never stops, and gets an arm on him. And a cider at only 170 pounds, if you get a lick on him, you can bring him down. Second down, long yardage now for the Rainbows. What the Rainbows have to fight is the change of momentum. They cannot let down. They lead 28 to 7. Gabriel inside the five-yard line. Dean Flick, screen play to Farmer. Needs the block. Farmer at the 20, at the 21, and is dumped from behind. And Jamal Farmer. A little flare pattern last year. It went uh, for over 70 yards on a touchdown. That will bring up third down from the 21-yard line. This is the kind of play, a third and five, that the Rainbows are going to have to be effective on throughout the remainder of the game. They don't want to give Ty Detmer and the BYU offense good field position. You punt, and at this point, Haynes will be back on his own 10 punting. Should they not get it, that will give the Cougars good field position. Rainbow's four for four in third down conversion. Gabriel throws long up the sideline for Branch. Comes back, and let's see. They say incomplete. Irvin Lee got position in front of him. Branch claiming interference. He could not get to the ball. Well, we're going to see Branch step back, trying to get behind Lee. He does. But as it slows him down, it takes him one step off the stride. That's the difference between making the reception. And that was a good call because there was no real contact there between Branch and Lee. So it is fourth down. And the Rainbows, Winston Haynes, 35.9 average, eighth in the whack, into punt. And Mike Salito, deep for Brigham Young, standing at his own 34-yard line. Very short punt. Salito comes up, no fair catch. Takes it at the 45 and is met by the green shirts. Fumble on the play. Fumble. Rainbows have it. Rainbows are winning the turnover battle in a big way, Jim. The third one committed by the Cougars. Rainbows perfect in that department. It's Terry Whitaker. Three men hit Salito. He might have been better served taking a fair catch. We're going to watch Whitaker with the arm in, and that ball is going to come loose just before Salito hits the turf, and in the scramble, the Rainbow's able to come up with it. That is very close. Very close uh, to the ground, causing that fumble, and you have to wonder if, if uh, Salito's knee was down. Be that as it may, the Rainbows have another excellent opportunity at the BYU 48-yard line, first down. Gabriel keeps it to the 45. Gabriel to the 42-yard line. Good game by Garrett Gabriel. One thing Gabriel has to, to do, and he has been doing it, especially in the second half of this season, he is presenting that third option, keeping the ball himself. There you see Lavelle Edwards. He has been through all of this before. His record speaks for itself. There is talk about uh, Lavelle stepping up and taking over the athletic director spot when Glenn Tuckett, who is an excellent athletic director, retires in a few years. Second down and five. In motion is MacArthur. 
ball is given to Farmer short of the first down. Gets to the 41 yard line and they're able to squeeze him to the turf there. Rick Wilson and Eddie Green. Eddie Green number 49, 6'3", 290, a senior. And uh, Wilson, 6'2", 270, and a senior out of Provo, Utah, making the stop. Third down for the Rainbows. They are now 4-4-5 four, four, in third down conversions. Con Smith and Derek Branch are to the far side. Con Smith is picked up by Mitchell. And Norm Dixon watches Branch. MacArthur to the near side. Flair to MacArthur. He needs yardage for the first down, and he goes out of bounds at the 39, I believe, is short. That will bring up fourth down. And the question, do the Rainbows gamble and go for it? Well, it's not much question what the crowd's going to want the Rainbows to do. Looks like uh, we'll see where they spot it. Well, it's going to be very close, but yes, definitely short. Half a yard. Well, maybe three quarters of a yard. And they're going, Jim. Well, Gabriel, quarterback, sneak it. He does not. Gives it to Farmer. Farmer may be short. Farmer really hit at the line of scrimmage. Rick Wilson able to cover him up. It will depend on the spot of the ball, and I believe he's short. I believe he is short, and he is. BYU will take over. Well, you talked earlier about momentum changes, Jim. This is the kind of thing that could pump a team that's a little down up. They make a big play on, on fourth down, and right here, Jamal Farmer gets nowhere to go. Great penetration by BYU. Two white jerseys, and they're able to defeat the blocks of the offensive lineman for Hawaii. BYU trails 28 to 7. 11-15 left to play in the first half. Detmer to throw. Old for his last five. Does throw. It is incomplete. Intended for Peter Tui Pelosi. And the Rainbows put pressure on him again. Mark Odom. That will bring up second down and ten. By Detmer, coached by his father throughout his life. Played play for his father in his in high school. A couple of different ways to deal with blocks. Mark Detmer going to push the offensive line and May right back into Detmer. Two ways to do it. Odom out weighed by 40 pounds yet manages to get the good push. Second down and 10. Detmer rolling. Has time and has room. Now throws. It is complete to Smith and it tumbles away from him. Smith had his arms around the ball. The Rainbows then bothered him and the ball came out and now Detmer is 0 for his last seven. Garrett Gabriel has set a UH record for career total offense. He now has 5,950 yards, 180 yards tonight. The old record of 5,944 by Rafael Cherry. Well, Smith was well covered as he came across the middle into the left flat. Detmer had some real estate in front of him. Might have been better served to tuck it up under and take the, the yardage that the Rainbows were allowing him. Nyberg is flanked to the left. Slotted inside of Nyberg is Boyd. Tight end is Smith. He sets up on the right. Detmer to throw. Here come the bow. Detmer stepping out of trouble. Now he throws. It is complete to Boyce. Coming back to the ball. Those two have practiced that and practiced that over the course of time. And the way the ball was thrown and the way Boyce reacted to it, it was perfect. Well, Boyce makes the, he's going to see him making the cut. He goes out and now says, well, this ball might not reach me. I'm going to take a couple steps back the other way. He does, comes right to it. Knew he had first down yardage. That's the chemistry between Detmer and the wide receivers that served BYU well this entire season. Larger measure in why uh, Detmer's won the Heisman because the receivers and he have that great chemistry. Matsuzaki into the game now. He is flanked to the near side. Matsuzaki picked up by Harper. Harper with two interceptions in this game. Bellini in motion to the left. Detmer looks to Bellini, checks off. Detmer now throws. It is complete to Tui Pelotu coming out of the backfield. And Tui Pelotu is upended at the 39. Pressler, Pressler and Tony Pankey. A couple of the mighty mites in the Hawaii secondary, Jim, able to put a good lick on Peter Tui Pelotu. Tui Pelotu, very strong. They call him the juggernaut up in Provo. They thought he blossomed this season. He has, but he takes a nice lick from the two little guys, Pankey and Tressler. These two teams really going at each other now. The ball at the 39. Rainbows lead 28 to 7. 
10 17 left to play in the first half. Detman, a Heisman Trophy winner. Second down and four. Boyce in motion. They overload the left side. Detmer looking for Bellini. Now throws for Nyberg. Nyberg out in front. He has it at the 10. Nyberg scores. That was a time pattern. And Nyberg able to accelerate to the ball. And it is now 28 to 13. 39 yard scoring pass for Ty Detmer. And Detmer's 39th touchdown of the season. Ty Detmer just steps up, steps up and lets it rip. It's Kim McLeod back with Nyberg. He's beat by half a step. Nyberg manages to keep his footing. Excellent You're gonna catch. Watch, watch him look over his shoulder. That's a tough catch. It's coming almost directly over his head. Nyberg, another guy who's been able to do it. He's made 45 catches in the course of the season. There's the extra point by Kaufman. Nyberg's fourth touchdown catch of the campaign. And it is 28 to 14 in favor of Hawaii. 959 left to play in the first half. Momentum. Well, we mentioned about momentum. The Rainbows had everything going for them. They led 28 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. Now the momentum has started to swing back. And Detmer being given time, he's been able to work with his receivers, especially Brent Nyberg. It is now 28 to 14 in favor of the Rainbows. Deep for the Bows will be Larry Conn Smith, number 86, and Jeff Seidner, number 26. Kaufman will kick off. And he will kick to Conn Smith. Comes up and takes it at the 7. Conn Smith at the 25. Conn Smith battles out to the 28-yard line. And it will be first down for the Rainbows at the 28, 21-yard uh, return by Larry Conn Smith. There you see the scoring drive, Detmer's 39-yard touchdown pass. That matches the number of touchdown passes he's thrown, also 39. Nyberg's fourth touchdown reception of the year. And it is 28-14, and BYU back in it. Rainbows must respond now. They played a perfect first quarter. Eddie Kealoha has come in at running back, replacing Jamal Farmer. Kealoha out of Iolani. Ball is kept by Gabriel. Look it. Gabriel throws. It is complete to Branch to the 39. That's very close to the first down. Irwin, Irvin Lee from uh, Navasota, Texas, the junior defensive back, made the stop for BYU. Jim, one of the things that running deep routes early, which the Rainbows did, and it gets very effective, is you get the defensive back starting to backpedal there, anticipating deep routes. You break them off, you curl back the way Derek Branch did, and you can get 10, 11 yards in a chunk. And hey, let's face it, you can get first downs with a pass. 10 or 11 yards is nothing to snicker at. First down for the Bulls. Branch and Con Smith are flanked to the right side. Ball is given, no, it is uh, given on a sweep to MacArthur. And MacArthur does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Derwin Gray there to diagnose the flight. Good fake up the middle that time to uh, Kealoha. And they gave it uh, to MacArthur, but Dane unable to get back to the line of scrimmage. And then we'll bring up second down long yardage. Second down and 11, 9.04 left to play in the first half. 28-14 rainbow. Crowd is all of a sudden quieted down. Or they can feel the momentum. Gabriel flares it out to MacArthur. And MacArthur has to recover that ball just in case it was thrown behind him. Well, MacArthur didn't want to take any chances. The Rainbows, when they throw that route, sometimes will get it behind the receiver. If they do that, it becomes judged a lateral. The ball's free. That one, though, a forward pass and just incomplete. The Rainbow offensive line continues to perform well in this game. They continue to hold BYU's defense, and it is an excellent defense. Gabriel has not been sacked. But then on the other hand, neither has Detmer. Third down and 11. Gabriel running out of trouble. Now throws. Coming back is Feidner. Oh, he almost made the catch sitting down at the 38. That would have been something. Norm Dixon kept running. Good job by the BYU defense. That time, for the first time, Gabriel really had to throw in a hurry. He was under pressure, Jim. Stepped up, actually puts the ball very close to on the money, considering he takes the big hit. Zeidner, who lost his footing, turned, had a chance at the ball, 
from his wallet and uh, reached up and couldn't quite pull it down. Mike Salido is deep for Brigham Young and Winston Haynes into punt yet another time for the Rainbows here in the second quarter. And that is just free of the block. Salido calls for the fair catch, puts it down at the 30-yard line. Ty Detmer has set two more NCAA marks, his 23rd consecutive game, throwing a TV, uh, a TV pass and his 84th career touchdown pass. How do you lasso 177 horses? Where can you The last time Ty Detmer was on the field, managed a, a touchdown pass to Brent Nyberg. You see him walking off after that play, talking to the linemen, saying, hey guys, get pumped up. You guys give me a little time, and I'll stick it in the end zone. A lot of sight going on there down on the field. 28-14, the Rainbows lead BYU, and you have to say it, the Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer. Detmer has an almost uncanny ability to sidestep out of trouble. Double tight end alignment. Detmer fakes the play action, has all day, all day, throws. Smith, leaping catch at the 49. And now Brigham Young has changed up. Has come with a new alignment, and it yield success after the 49 yard line this is what smith does so well comes up on the near hash mark goes all the way across the field this is when they do get a slight size advantage if not a speed one whitaker at 510 and against the 64 smith and he goes up high and brings it down 816 left to play in the first half first down from their own 49 yard line detmer beginning to click now again with time but this one's battered back rainbow's getting the hand up Tanovasa, number 96. And that will bring up second down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Let's see. Well, you can almost see Ty Detmer getting his confidence up. Not that it was ever completely gone. Ma Ta you're right, Tanovasa getting the big paw just in time to knock that down. Second down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Nyberg to the left, Boyce and Smith to the right. Rainbows have to cut down Detmer's throwing time. Here comes Maeva. Can't get to him. Throw to Nyberg. Intercepted. Harper, his third interception. Breaks the tackle by Boyce and is out of bounds at the 43. Kenny Harper is going crazy tonight. Kenny Harper making a career out of picking off Ty Detmer. I think he now leads BYU, he leads the BYU team in receptions. More for Harper than any single receiver. But Kenny Harper stepping up, taking the chances that maybe he didn't always take earlier this season. But tonight, his confidence up on the first two, this time comes across perfect timing. And Kenny Harper holds on. The fourth turnover committed by the Cougars. First that down. In, that in itself is very unusual. First down for the Bows at their own 40-yard line. They lead 28-14, 7.55 left to play in the first half. Kaloha. Aloha to the 43, second down and seven. Some extra shoving going on in the secondary. Alima Pitise Manu there to undercut Kealoha. Detmer now 10 for 22. 161 yards, one touchdown. The 39-yarder to Nyberg. And he has been intercepted three times, all three times, by Harper. And the Rainbows have been able to turn the first two interceptions into touchdowns. Second down, seven from the 43. Kept by Gabriel. Pitches back. This is Seidner. Seidner at the 50. Seidner with the first down at the BYU 47. Irvin Lee able to ankle tackle him, at least trip him up. Kenny Harper's third interception tonight. That ties the UH record. That record held by Tony Pankey. Banke had three interceptions against Cal State Fullerton. Harper has picked off the Heisman Trophy winner three times tonight. First and 10 from the 47. Ke Aloha. Ke Aloha to the 40.
Well, Jim, I think one of the reasons Eddie Kealoha may be in the game right now is Kealoha hits the hole a little bit faster than Jamal Farmer does. There's only a brief window of opportunity against that defensive line, and I think Eddie Kealoha gets there quicker. He's not as flashy once he's through it, but he gets there and gets the six or seven that might be available better than anybody else on the Rainbow team. Ball at the 41, second down, three and a half. Double wide receiver to the right. Ball is kept by Gabriel, pitches back. This is MacArthur, 35, MacArthur at the 30. He is out of bounds at the 23-yard line. First down, Bo. Brian Mitchell finally able to chase him out of bounds. And the Rainbows, all of a sudden, the momentum starting to swing back. Great job by Garrett Gabriel. Picks it back out from Kealoha. Pitches at the last possible second to MacArthur. And Dane MacArthur does a lot on his own. Gets one block by Con Smith on the outside. A check it by Seidner. Watch it right here. It's Jeff Seidner with the block. And he springs Dane MacArthur. 17-yard gain by MacArthur on that last play. First down from the 23. Ball is given to Kealoha. And Kealoha runs into a wall of white. Able to force him back. Rocky Beagle there, number 45. Beagle and again, Elema Fiti Samondo. Well, Fiti Simano, bottom of your screen, very quick, number 37, the rush linebacker. Watch him come in. How strong is he? Just an arm to wrap up the ball carrier. That's not easy to do. That's a very strong young man. Second and nine from the 22. Branch and the Brian Gordon are flanked to the near side. Gordon has one catch. That was against Air Force. Gabriel looking. Throws Gordon. Touchdown. by Kenny Harper three touchdowns by the rainbow and now and now with two catches is Brian Gordon and that is the sweetest ever 22 yard touchdown throw by Garrett Gabriel it is 34 to 14 rainbows 526 left to play and the first half Darren Kahn and Gabriel, Gabriel, now Bobby Gabriel is 11 for 21, 205 yards, and two touchdowns. Jim, earlier this season against Air Force, we were up in the box watching Brian Gordon get a ball put in his hands. He couldn't hang on to it. The coaches say he's worked very hard at catching the football, has improved on that in the course of the season. It pays off with the biggest catch of his football career. And you're going to get to see it right here. Garrett Gabriel with a good time. He gets it right down the middle, just the post route. And Brian Gordon, right in stride, holds it in. He just gets half a step on Derwin Gray. And Brian Gordon's going to reach up. Never has to break stride. Gabriel right on the dough. Deep for Brigham Young, Stacy Corley, number 21, and Scott Charlton, number 43. 526 left, 35 to 14 in favor of the Rainbows. It has been a tremendous effort again by this underdog team. Now remember, this is the number four team in the nation, according to the AP poll. This is also the number three team in the nation, according to CNN USA Today. They're going to their ninth holiday bowl. There's the kick by Velasco, and it goes out of bounds. Rainbows will be penalized five yards, and they will kick off from the 30. 526 left here in the first half. Matsuzaki getting in a discussion with some of the Rainbows, and the boos start again. Carl, uh, Corley and Charlton will again be back for uh, Brigham Young. And they should have excellent field position following this kickoff. And we see Gene Wirtz's illegal procedure. This is the scoring drive for the Rainbows. Again, another pass interception, the third of the night for Detmer. And Kenny Harper picking off his third. That sets it up. Six plays, 60 yards, 22 yards. Touchdown pass from Gabriel is 24th of the season now. And the uh, two 
Brian Gordon, his first touchdown reception. Jim, the last time we saw three picks by one player in this stadium was Nate Odoms from the University of Wisconsin, and he's enjoying right now a very fine NFL career. And thank you. Can't forget Tony Pankey. You're right. Velasco kicks off from the 30-yard line. This one will go to Charlton at the 15. Charlton looking for running room to the 30. That's all. Sides up for now 10 for 22, three interceptions, 161 yards, and the one touchdown pass to Nyberg. 35-14, Rainbows, 5-20 left to play in the first half, and BYU must make a statement now. They've got to answer back. Boyce picked up by Harper to the near side. Nyberg watched by McLeod to the far side. Detmer looking, throws, Nyberg throws it low. Incomplete, second down and 10. Rainbow now 10 for 23. Rainbow's getting some good pressure on Ty Detmer, at least enough to make him think and make him know he's got to get rid of it. Nyberg just had made his break, didn't even have a chance to come back to the football. That's what you need. Not necessarily the sacks, but you got to get the hurry. Matsuzaki into the game now. Single coverage on Matsuzaki McLeod. To the near side, voice. He's watched by Hopper and Tressler. Detmer throws wide open. Matsuzaki at the 45 at the 50. And Matsuzaki takes a lick from Harper at the 47-yard line. Here come the boos. Well, Mike is going to have to. He's a big boy. And he can, he no doubt can handle that. He no doubt is in a very good mood tonight. Maybe not right now after taking that lick. But going into this, uh, into this game is the high school team, St. Louis, again winning the prep bowl. And we congratulate them and also Farrington for getting to the prep hole and Matsuzaki. Now, this is not, this is a little unsportsmanlike. I mean, the young man is not 100% right now. Slowly walking it off. It was fun to watch Michael Matsuzaki play football. Got a chance to do quite a number of the, the St. Louis games on radio when he was a senior, and he was just such a sensational player. Can almost take over a game from the wide receiver position. He's had great success at BYU. Got to wish him well in his career there. And the fans uh, applaud him as he leaves. First down for Brigham Young at the 46 of the rainbow. Nyberg to the near side, Boyce to the far side. Out of the backfield again goes Chris Smith. Detmer to Tui Pelotu. Tui Pelotu inside the 45 to the 44, that's all. And Mark Odom with the ankle tackle that time, number 56. Odom, nine sacks in the year, 34 in his career, more sacks by... Odom than any other rainbow, including Al Noga now with the uh, Minnesota Vikings and Matsuzaki right back into the game. Matsuzaki to the left and Boyce to the right. See if Detmer goes to Micah again. Chris Smith, the tight end, sets up on the right. Detmer with time. Now throw. It is complete to Boyce at the 35. Boyce dancing to the 30. Harper there along with Tressler. And that's an example of that offensive line. If you're unable to get to Detmer, he and his receivers will have huge success against you. Boyce goes right down the hash mark. He breaks it out very crisply. And the thing you notice about Boyce, always comes back a couple steps towards the football. Those guys really hook it up together. Detmer to Boyce. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Detmer on a pitch to the near side. Corley. To the 26, gain of four. It will be second down and six. Perry Whitaker, who leads uh, the Rainbows in tackles going into this game, he had 87. He is now over 90. Credited with a stop on that play. It will be second down. 337 left and the clock ticking. We are in the first half. Matsuzaki brings in a play to Ty Detmer. Detmer now 12 for 25, 199 yards and one touchdown. Boyce and Matsuzaki. Matsuzaki in a mismatch with Tressler. Boyce in motion back toward the middle. Detmer with time. They chase him. He throws. Almost picked off by Whitaker. 
It was intended for Stacy Corley coming out of the backfield. Now that's an example of hurrying Detmer. When you hurry him, he is not as accurate, and the passes go awry as right here. No doubt about that, Jim. He took a step to his left. He didn't want to take, was behind his receiver. Terry Whitaker showed you some athleticism, stopped dead in his traps, and made the upper part of his body come back. He, he very nearly made one of the greatest interceptions you'd ever see. Big play here. Big play here. Nyberg to the left, voice to the right. Chris Smith, the tight end to the right. Carlton and Sui Peloto in the backfield. Detmer throws, intercepted! Intercepted by Tank Key. Tank Key to the 35. The fourth interception off of Detmer. And for Tank Key, his sixth interception of the season. He is right up there among the WAC leaders. Again, Jim, some pressure coming at Detmer, although he had some time. He just takes a look into traffic. Pressure doesn't start coming until late, and really not a factor. I don't think he ever saw a Tony Pankey. He just cut in front, was invisible to Detmer until he appeared at the last second. Rainbows, though, in the secondary, really holding on to the ball. And now Detmer uh, scolding his uh, receivers. But that looked like a that pass was thrown right into coverage. First down for the Rainbows at their own 36-yard line. Ball is pitched back. With it is MacArthur. He has the first down out over the 45 to the 47. Alima Fiji Samanu, who is in on every tackle now, and one of the Rainbows is down, and that is Sean Ching, the Rainbow center. Ching, second team, all whack in 1990. Many believe that Sean Ching is the best center in the Western Athletic Conference. Arguably, a case could be made for him. But Ching down right now. He will be replaced by Le Moitour. Well, Le Jim, one of the things that the Rainbow coaches pointed out was that when those ballots had to be in, the Rainbow still had three whack games left to play. Wyoming, Colorado State, and also tonight's game against BYU. They felt that the coaches who were voting they hadn't had a chance to see a lot of the Rainbows. Uh, incidentally, the center who did win it was Bob Stevens, and he is the guy wearing the white jersey on this same field tonight. So concern for Sean Chang with two minutes and 53 seconds left in the first half. The Rainbow offensive line, much maligned this year uh, because of injuries and because of inexperience. There have been seven different lineups in that offensive line throughout the season, but they have performed admirably tonight. Coach Bob Wagner and his staff say aloha to the Rainbow football fans from Kaneohe Marine Corps Air Station deployed in the Middle East in the Persian Gulf. And appearing to be okay is Sean Chain as he trots off under his own power. Jay Janelle and the University of Hawaii are proud to send a tape of this game to all of the troops along with messages from their family. Some of the Rainbow coaching staff, Rich Ellison has a brother, Jeff, a civilian working for the Saudis. Graduate assistant Todd Murgatroyd has two brothers-in-law in the Middle East. Cheerleader Jim Nichols has a brother, David, an Army mechanic in the Persian Gulf. We send our alohas to you. Hurry home. First down for the Bows. Gabriel rolling. Throws. Oh, wide right open is Seidner. He's at the 20. Fumbles to the 50. Seidner. Seidner. Saw touchdown. And his feet were not as fast as his mind. Jeff Seidner was so alone, he didn't know what to make of it. Some, a blown assignment right here. You're going to watch. They're going to drift away from Seidner. They're in zone defense. Seidner looped around, got behind, nobody near him, and he just lost his footing. We've seen that happen. I think just too much real estate for him to keep his feet. And you can see Gabriel, the reaction to Seidner falling down at the 14-yard line. Oh, he thought he had touchdown there. First down for the Rainbows at the 14 of BYU. In motion is McCarthy. Three wide receivers now for the right. Well, let's give it to Kealoha. And Kealoha tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Able to get to the 12-yard line. Mark Smith, number 91, out of Winslow, Arizona. 6'1", 260 pounds, the senior. There to make the stop for BYU. And Sean Ching back in the game at center now for the Rainbows. 153, and you can see the clock ticking away. Rainbows really in no hurry. They lead 35 to 14. This crowd buzzing, buzzing about this game. This is almost, almost days 
Gabriel to throw. Shovel, that's to MacArthur. We were waiting for that, and so was BYU. They really were, Jim. Rich Kabuti, not fooled at all, came right down and made the tackle. Uh, Rainbows have had been hot and cold with that particular play. I mean, it can get you the huge game, but also if it's diagnosed properly, it becomes risky because the ball is vulnerable with a lot of enemy jerseys right in the neighborhood. Third down and 10. The ball just inside the 15. Gabriel now 12 for 22. 239 yards, two touchdowns. Seidner, three receptions now, 80 yards in this game. MacArthur has rushed now five times for 64 yards and a touchdown, and he has received five passes for 85 yards and a touchdown, and timeout has been called with 51 seconds left. Rainbow's leading 35-14. When we come back, they'll have it at the 14-yard line. Do you have the time? Sorry, I took my watch apart. I was hoping it was after four. Nap time? Some bush. No, after four, you get a BK broiler at Burger King for only 99 cents when you buy one at the regular price. BK broiler? Flame broiled chicken on an oat bran bun. Sounds better than strained peas. And right now, when you buy one, the second is only 99 cents after 4 p.m. 99 cents, pretty radical. That's Burger King. Sometimes you gotta break the rules. Okay, BK broiler, then a nap. Customer service, this is Evan. I'll be happy to set that up for you. Ikeda. Got it. Thank you, Mrs. Ikeda. I'll think about that at home. Let's upgrade it to a better pricing plan. What do you think? That's a good idea. It's all taken care of, Mrs. Ikeda. No problem. I'm faxing it over there right now. Yes, Mrs. Ikeda. I'm still here. No, I haven't had lunch yet. Evan, visitor. Customer service. Mrs. Ikeda? Good work has its own reward. Long Distance USA. No matter how careful you are, accidents do happen, and when they do... Seconds left to play in the first half. Jim Leahy along with Bobby Curran. Final game of the 1990 season. The Rainbows ahead of BYU, the number four team in the nation. 35 to 14. Third down and 10. Ball just inside the 15-yard line of BYU. The Rainbows have played a magnificent first half. Trying to take another turnover and turn it into a score. Gabriel pump figure. Throws into the end zone. Incomplete. Falling down was MacArthur. MacArthur at double coverage. Branch went to the left corner of the end zone. Con Smith to the right. And MacArthur on a crossing pattern. Rainbows will send out the field goal team. And it will be Darren Kahn in field goals. He is 10 for 14. And we'll see where they will mark it for the attempt. And it is at the 22, 32 yard attempt. Kahn's longest has been 32 and it is a fake with the ball of Santiago trying for the first down he will not get there too many white shirts now running along behind him was Khan but Santiago did not pitch him the ball Rainbow turn it over for the second time in this first half on fourth down but got the attempt nonetheless There you, there you see the snap from Lemoy Tua. Santiago's the former quarterback. I think if maybe he had a little more confidence, Darren Kahn was definitely open. The pitch is the play, but Santiago, the guy who's way more comfortable with the ball in his hand. So first down for Brigham Young, 43 seconds left in the first half. And a challenge to Detmer. Detmer, remember, is the Heisman Trophy winner. Detmer from his end zone. Rangel's not putting any pressure at all. Detmer will run, and he goes out of bounds at the 16. Takes a hit out of bounds, and we will have a personal foul called on Trussler. And Trussler was clearly out of bounds when he made the hit. No, there, there's some pushing going on, but there is no doubt about that. No doubt about the call. I mean, that had to be flagged, and that was flagrant.
And we'll take a wide and look right now. Is Denver heads out of bounds? Is he out of bounds? He is. Yeah, you're right. He's a good. He's out of bounds and was obviously headed that way. Rainbows would have been better served to lay off him. I wasn't sure the first time if his foot had actually crossed when he took the hit. And you got to you got to remember anything close. A guy just wins the Heisman. You're going to get a flag real quick if it's even close. So the player's got to be play smart and be aware of that. So the penalty moves the ball up to the 33-yard line. And it will be first down. 34 seconds left. No problem for Detmer. He has scored before with Tom running out. He can make a statement and take the momentum with him. Matsuzaki picked up by Harper to the near side. Smith is flanked to the far side. What a mismatch on Tressler. Boy, they can get it to Smith. Look out. Detmer rolling, looking. Detmer is bubbles the ball. It's picked up by one of the backfield men. It was Toledo. Uh, that is a hit by Odom, and he's been waiting a long time for that. And, Jim, the thing you've got to love about the hit by Odom, he was blocked, he was ridden out of the play. But what he does is he stays with the play. Odom was blocked. You can't see him in your picture. He's going to come back. He was blocked away. The lineman quit, but Mark Odom didn't. He comes right back and knocks the ball loose from Ty Detmer. Time on his call with 17 seconds left. And so Odom, with 34 career sacks, not on the season, able to strip Detmer of the ball that time, and that moves the line of scrimmage from the 33 back to the 25. And Detmer has 17 seconds left. We'll take another look at this. Detmer being caught from behind. Watch the strip. The right arm, the ball comes loose. It's picked up by Salido. But right there is David Tanavata to put an end to Salido's journey. 17 seconds left, and you look at uh, the coach of BYU, Lavelle Edwards, who is not pleased with the way things have gone here in this first half. Both teams huddling the rainbow defense over across the way, huddling uh, uh, with Coach Bob Wagner and also the defensive coaches over there. Rainbow's leading 35 to 14. They have taken three out of four turnovers and turned them into scores. Both have played another one of those storybook games so far. And we're coming up on the end of the first half. Nyberg is flanked to the far side. To the near side is Matsuzaki. Tui Pelotu and Charlton are in the backfield. Not Matsuzaki, but Boyd. I stand corrected. Detmer to throw. Here comes the rainbow pressure. Detmer throws. It is complete. Tui Pelotu. He is hit by Joaquin Barnett and Whitaker. Gets it out to the 35-yard line. Eight seconds left. Seven. And the BYU will call a timeout. Ty Detmer. Highlight of his life today. No doubt. One of the Heisman Trophy. And he deserves it. I mean, with the numbers that he has put up. And he is a junior. He has already said that he will be back at BYU next year for his senior year. He believes in upholding his commitment. And now the butt fact. Four teams from the Western Athletic Conference will be going to bowls. The Air Force, that's an agreement with the Liberty Bowl. It's kind of a backdoor thing, but they are going. BYU against Texas A&M. I'd like to see Brigham Young against the higher-ranked team in the Holiday Bowl. Freedom Bowl, Colorado State against Oregon. And the Copper Bowl, Wyoming against California. San Diego State. An admirable performance today against Miami, losing by two. San Diego State not going to a bowl. Third down, seven. Pitch goes to Charlton. Here come the rainbow defenders. Joaquin Barnett will ride him down at the 43. That's the end of the first half. So both coaches join with the officials as they trot off. But the Rainbows lead the fourth-ranked team of the nation at halftime, 35 to 14. They are at halftime. The Rainbows over the Cougars of Brigham Young by a score of 35 to 14. In history repeat itself, we shall see when we return the kickoff for the second half. Services have been provided by the following in exchange for promotional consideration.
Tory Richard, Cook Street, Diamond Head Ice, and the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Hawaii. Rainbow's played almost a flawless first quarter, a quarter that lasted nearly an hour. And it was Garrett Gabriel faking the play action to Jamal Farmer and the pitch around the corner to Dane MacArthur and the Canadian from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan reaches pay dirt with fond blocking. Not only did the Rainbow score on the ground, but they also scored through the air. Garrett Gabriel, one of his two touchdown passes in the first half. This one uh, to Brian Gordon. That is only the second catch of the season for Gordon. That's his first touchdown reception. But then you have the Heisman Trophy winner, and he has not had a bad first half as far as yardage is concerned. He threw for 209 yards, including this touchdown pass to Brent Nyberg, who had just well to the ball, accelerates away from uh, McLeod for the touchdown, 35-14, as we're about ready to start uh, the second half. Let's take a look at the Tony Roma's halftime statistics. Brought to you by Tony Roma's. Call Tony Roma's for lip-smacking ribs. After all, quality is in their bones. That's why we all think Tony Roma's is number one. Rainbows with the advantage in total yardage, but there's one stat that jumps out at you there, and it's the turnovers. Five by the Cougars. Rainbows flawless in that department. Rainbows also with an advantage in time of possession. That'll be crucial, especially in the second half. The Rainbows going to have to grind it out and keep BYU's offense off the field. And that momentum, that element that enters into athletic contests that can swing from one way to another. Momentum in the first half, briefly with Gum Young, but most of all, because of the turnovers, it kept swinging back to the Rainbows. Now, the Rainbows will have their first crack at it. Here in half number two, leading 35 to 14. Carl Kaufman kicks off. Coming up to get it, Jeff Seidner takes it on the 10-yard line. Seidner trying to get outside. And he succumbs to the pressure as he crosses the 25 to the 27-yard line. And there to make the stop for Brigham Young was David Kennard. Gabriel in the first half, 14 of 24, and then you see 242 yards and two touchdowns. Offensively for the Rainbows, they had nine drives in the first half, 23 running plays, 24 passing plays, 47 total plays, and 35 points. First and 10 from the 27, Jamal Farmer in at running back. Ball is kept in a pitch to the near side. This is MacArthur to the 40. MacArthur to midfield. MacArthur to the 30. To the 20 to the 19-yard line. And that's the first play of the second half. Jim, we talked about MacArthur with his first rushing touchdown. This is the option and very well executed. Again on the outside, MacArthur gets a great block on the inside. Another one by Con Smith here. MacArthur off to the races, 53 yards. MacArthur's got some speed. He's deceptive, and he takes it right down the sideline. Talk about momentum, Jim, and getting it built right back up, and the crowd now into the game again in the first play of the second half. Official say stepped out at the 21-yard line, first and 10 for the Rainbows at the BYU 21. Double wide receiver to the near side. That's Branch and number 86, Con Smith. Ball is given to Farmer. Farmer angling off the left side, hit at the line of scrimmage, able to, to gain a couple, that's all. We'll get a look at what the Rainbows did with their first half possessions, and boy, it was perfection to start this game out. You're taking a look, first four possessions, two of those turnovers, interceptions by Kenny Harper, all four times right into the end zone. They locked up a little bit after that, but hey, nobody scores on every possession. Second down and eight for the Rainbows at the 19 of BYU. Branch and Constance now to the left. Ball is given again to Farmer. Farmer, very short game from the 18 to about the 17 yard line. Rich Kaufuse, 6'4, senior out of Salt Lake City, number 59. And that man again, Alema Fiti Samanu, number 37, there to make uh, the tackle for BYU. Third down and six. Branch. Picked up by Urban Lee to the far side. Tom Smith watched by Mitchell to the near side. 
Gabriel throws down the middle. Spikeler, touchback! Sider and MacArthur, the two-man wrecking crew. The slot goes down in the middle. The linebackers in zone coverage can't stay with MacArthur and Seidner. Rainbows go to the well again, and Seidner as open as open can be. It's 41 to 14 in favor of the Rainbows. Khan in the make it 42, and it is not good. He misses it. 41-14. Rainbows over fourth ranked BYU. Can you believe it? Nearly a million working men and women. It's a major. Jeff Seidner, he's in the slot to the right. This is the touchdown play. Comes out, just cuts in the middle. Isn't many linebackers that can stay with Jeff Seidner. He gets the step, he's right open. And boy, Garrett Gabriel really right on time tonight, picking up the open receivers. Oh, caught a kind of a Heisman Trophy pose there by Seidner. Talk about, ooh, talk about rubbing it in, huh? They isolated Seidner on Rocky Beagle, and uh, Rocky had some trouble with him in the second day. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Seidner, 41-14. Away over BYU. Picking off is Sal Velasco. And it will go to Corlin. Corley up the sidelines, Corley to the 27, and a penalty flow. I mean, last year was a catharsis for Hawaii fans after 10 straight losses to BYU. It was, it was something that people left the stadium with a tingling feeling, almost a snake dance on their way home to their abodes around the island of Oahu. And who would think that the next year it would pretty much be the same thing? Here's Gene Wirtz. I don't know what that signal was. We have clipping against the kicking team. 15-yard penalty. First down. Clipping against the kicking team. Okay. <laughs> That's one you don't see very often. Okay. That brings it out to, to the... I have, in fact, I have not seen that one. And Mark Odom hadn't either. He went over to say, excuse me, sir, but don't you have this backwards? First down for Brigham Young. They trail 41-14, 12-59 left, third quarter. Detmer at quarterback. Detmer starts off right away to throw. Second half, Kui Pelosi wide open at midfield. Kui Pelosi to the rainbow, 40. And they finally catch up with him at the rainbow 37-yard line. So you see the adjustment by BYU that time. Out of the backfield, Tui Pelotu caught that ball in a meadow. And he was running all alone on the turf. Well, Tui, Tui Pelotu stayed back to block, released. He's the safety valve for Detmer. Finds himself wide open. Not a guy they usually go to in their passing attack. Maybe fools the Rainbows a little bit. They're going to have to play stiff defense because Ty Detmer's brought this team from way down before. 16-yard game. Smith in motion. Detmer gets the ball to Tui Pelosi. 35, 31-yard line. Terry Whitaker there to make the stop for the Rainbows. We'll take a look at what the Cougars did when they had the football in the first half. They didn't enjoy nearly the success the Rainbows did. It's the two interceptions. Both of them led to rainbow touchdowns that killed them. The third one later in the half also led to a rainbow touchdown. That is uncharacteristic for Ty Detmer. Second down and a four for Brigham Young. The ball just outside the 30-yard line. Detmer now 14 for 29. Four interceptions, 230 yards, and one touchdown. Rainbow splits Maeva again to give it to Tui Pelotu to the 25. Tui Pelotu caught from behind inside the 20. So Peter Tui Pelotu running very, very well behind that big offensive line of Fort at the 295 and Bomforth at 270. Stevens at 265. 
May at 290 and Kayam at 290. Rainbow's geared to the passing game. They're going to they're gonna let BYU break some runs. In fact, Rich Ellerson said if we give up 10 or 11 occasionally on a, on a run, on a run, a big run, well, that's okay. It's no worse than an 11 or 12 yard pass reception. Matsuzaki to the right and Boyce to the left. In motion is Big Chris Smith. Tui Pelotu to the 10. On first down from the 16-yard line. Gain of six, second down and four. Tui Pelotu just powering up the middle. And now BYU playing smash ball with uh, Tui Pelotu. Charlton Nyberg come into the game replacing Matsuzaki and Bellini. But now it is second down and four. The ball at the 10-yard line. They go just inside the six for a first down. Nyberg picked up by McLeod to the left. Detmer to Charlton. He is short of a first down. Charlton perhaps to the seventh. And the green shirt stiffen there. And the clock ticking to 10 minutes and 38 seconds left in the third period. Rainbow's leading 41 to 14. It'll be interesting, Jim, to see how long BYU stays with the running attack. You'd have to think, from their point of view, they want to keep it going as long as it produces yardage. It's not the way they're used to scoring their points, though. Three, a field goal will not help them at all. Third down, two and a half. Voice to the far side. Matsuzaki to the near side. Detmer, third down, Voice in motion back toward the middle. Detmer, he eludes the rush, throws to the end zone, Voice touchdown. Detmer, uncanny the way that he is able to elude the rush. He found Voice, and he has his second touchdown pass of the game. Rainbows are in here. They had the clean shot. Mark Odom with his arms on Detmer. Detmer never lost his poise for a second. More pressure coming. Stands back and finds a wide open Andy Boyce. Boyce adjusting to the ball again. He is an excellent receiver. For Andy Boyce, that is his 13th touchdown pass catch of the year. It is a 40th touchdown pass for Detmer. Hoffman is in to kick the extra point. It is 41-21. Rainbow's leading with 10 minutes exactly left to play in the third period. Ty Detmer has become, as you uh, read along with me, first quarterback in NCAA history to pass for more than 5,104 yards in a single season. Hoffman will kick off. Seidner and Con Smith deep for the Rainbows, 41-21. Rainbows with a 20-point lead, and Detmer can make up that in a hurry. He has done it before. This game far from over. In fact, it may just be started. Hoffman kicks off, and it will go to the most exciting runner of the Western Athletic Conference, Jeff Seidner. Seidner stays on his feet for the 25, for the 27. Seidner really took a hit that time, but able to spin away from trouble. So you see the seven-yard touchdown pass to Boyce. Detmer has thrown 40 touchdown passes this season, and Boyce has been there to catch 13 of them, 22-yard return. First down for the Rainbows. Rainbows came out, and they had little trouble scoring. And then uh, BYU with the draw plays to Tui Pelotu, carrying the ball most of the way down the field. They responded in a hurry. And Detmer able to duck under Mark Odom, freeing him up for the touchdown pass to Boyce. In fact, that touchdown pass was the 85th of his career. That's an NCAA record. Gabriel DeFro lays it off. MacArthur, they wait for him. And MacArthur back to the 20. That's all. Josh Arnold would have none of that play. In fact, of all the plays that the Rainbows really have worked on in this game, that little flare to either Seidner or MacArthur has played has paid very little dividend. What has worked, though, is those same guys they're throwing the flares to, MacArthur and Seidner, when they get out and get matched up with linebackers in the middle between the hash marks, that's been tremendously successful against the Cougars. I expect them to go back to more of that very soon. Branch to the far side, picked up by Irvin Lee. Mitchell watches Con Smith. Inside shovel pass to Seidner. P.T. Samano ankle tackles him back inside the 20. Rocky Beagle and P.T. Samano. 
Another loss on the play. It'll be third and long yardage now for the Bulls. BYU really stiffening. They know who the guys they have to watch are. The shovel pass, good spin out of trouble by Seidner, but Batista Mano's got the kind of speed that makes it tough for Seidner to run away from him. Back to the left, and Con Smith to the right. Third down and 17 from the 20. And the rain beginning to come down a little more now. Gabriel throws, it is Con Smith. First down at the 45. Con Smith at the 49. Con Smith hits the midfield. Rainbows convert on third down and long yardage, third and 17. Jim, that is the kind of play with which you win games. Garrett Gabriel had some room, but knew he couldn't make the first down. Throws across his body back to the open man, Larry Con Smith. Can't say enough about how the guy from Campbell High School, Con Smith, has blossomed in his final rainbow season. They give him forward progress to the 49. Actually, he did reach midfield, but probably after the whistle. Darren Gray making the tackle on that last flight. First and 10 for the rainbow from their own 49. Ball is kept by Gabriel. Pitches back. This is Seidner. And Seidner gets all the way down to the 40, and we have a penalty flight. Could be a clip or a face mask. We'll see. Rainbows are not reacting favorably. Holding on the bows. Well, Jim, it was Sean Robinson, the guy that they're going to whistle for the holding call. Holding, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. It is now first and 20 for the Rainbows. John Robinson, one of the seniors, playing his final game for the Rainbows. Now you see Bob Wagner, he'll make a note of that penalty on the manila envelope. Brian Gordon to the far side. He has caught a touchdown pass tonight. Slotted inside of Gordon is Seidner. Gabriel Rowling has time. Sets up, goes long over the middle. Comes off the hands of MacArthur. Boy, he was open. He was open. And loping along at the 35-yard line of uh, Brigham Young. A little too soon on the call of the completion left turn. Well, the Rainbows again, going back, we mentioned it a few minutes ago, the way that they're getting people open is the slots are beating linebackers in the zone between the hash marks. Rainbows again looked for the play, had MacArthur open once again. This time the ball unable for Dane MacArthur to hang on to it. Second down and 20 from their own 40-yard line. Gabriel, again with time, does throw. This is way long, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Irvin Lee. That's his second interception of the season, his first interception of the game, and the first interception by Garrett Gabriel. He is now thrown 16 on the season. And that ball really was not thrown well at all. No, it's not. Gabriel, a little off balance, tries to get his footing, and he puts it up with the rainbow arch and really the defender only the only chance to get it side or the intended receiver and not even close to it now with 725 left to play in the third the rainbow defense who has played superbly tonight against this this uh, almost maniac kind of offense that BYU can start to muster I mean BYU can put up points in a hurry you can almost watch the scoreboards revolve the light bulbs don't even get hot Detmer to throw, has time, throws over the middle, complete to Bellini. He's at the 45. Bellini trips up at the 45-yard line. Good open field tackle by Mike Tressler. Well, Gave Matt, the play of nine. Matt Bellini with a bad ankle, brought on the trip. They didn't expect to play him unless he chose to play. Matt Bellini, though, a gamer. He's been an outstanding receiver for BYU this season, and this is what he's special at comes over into the middle in traffic a very good runner after he catches the football and as you mentioned only that ankle tackle by Tressler keeps that from being a much bigger game. Boyce to the left Matsuzaki to the right Salido and Charlton in the backfield behind Detmer Detmer gives it to Charlton Charlton has the first down as he crosses the 45 gets to the 46 yard line and the clock ticks away to 6 minutes and 37 seconds left here in the third quarter well, Jim, David, David Maeva and uh, Terry Whitaker in on the start. To keep the rainbow lead in perspective, Jim, should, we should note that in eight of BYU's previous 11 games, they have ended up with more points than the rainbows presently have. This is an offensive juggernaut. They're far from finished. 
the Rainbows will have to, when they get it back on offense, are going to have to be careful not to be too conservative. They may well need more points to win this ball game. First and ten, the ball just short of the 47 for Brigham Young. Single setback. At Solido. Rainbow showing blitz. They do. The ball is given up the middle. Big hole, Toledo. Midfield, all the way down to the Rainbow 41. And we have a penalty flag. Is it holding against BYU? Or maybe offsides. Offsides against the Rainbow. Well, David Maeva was coming, and it looked like he got into the neutral zone prior to the snap. You're going to look him coming right here and just a half a step over. Tried to pull his feet back, but could not. So first down at the 41-yard line of the Bows. And BYU starting to operate now, starting to put it together. They trail by 20, 41 to 21. Boyce and Matsuzaki are the wide receivers. Keeping the ball is Stepman. He has all kinds of time, and he runs out of bounds inside the Rainbow 40. That stops the clock. Goes out, let's see, they say right there at the 40-yard line. Stepped out, gain on the play of only one. That will be second down and nine. Rainbow defense now, the goal is to try and prevent Detmer from killing you with the big plays. You get to a point where you can, you limit them to the short games, you get them into a third and long situation, you've got a chance to play when you can bring some pressure. Can't give Detmer second and short, though. Calhoun, Tonabasa, and Haku Kawano in that defensive line now for the Rainbows. Detmer with a hand on his back, goes to Boyce. This is a touchdown, perhaps. Out of bounds at the 10. And he outran Harper. And that's how BYU does it. You cannot get to Detmer. He will burn you, and he burns you to Boyce. Boyce and Nyberg have been his favorite receivers. And when they're not open, he goes to the big guy, Chris Smith. Good move to the outside. It fooled Kenny Harper. He lost two steps. And then it was a matter of Detmer just laying it into his favorite receiver, Andy Boyce. Now BYU in a position to score again. Rainbow's lead 41 to 21, even with a 20-point lead. That lead is not safe, not safe at all. Chris Smith in the middle of that full house backfield, he will go in motion. Detmer gives the ball to Salido inside the 10, knights his way to the 8-yard line. Now the clock ticking here in the third quarter, 5 minutes and 30 seconds. This is when the yardage gets tough. The Rainbows against Colorado State made three great goal line stands. An experienced offensive line here with BYU. I'm not sure they're going to be able to run it up the middle, but Ty Detmer doesn't need to do that. He is probably as good in the red zone inside the 20 as about any quarterback you're going to see. Detmer closing in on 300 yards now. 17 for 32, 276 yards, two touchdowns, four interceptions. Detmer, back to pass, throws into the end zone, kick off of Bellini incomplete. Oh, good, good pressure, you, good pressure. You're right, Jim, it was good pressure. It made Detmer hurry a little bit, and then also good coverage by the Rainbow secondary, right around Bellini, not letting him get that half a step open, because uh, Detmer, even under pressure, he gets the guy wide open, he'll loft it to him. BYU can get a first down inside the one-yard line. Third down, the ball is at the eight. BYU 5 for 8 in third down conversion. Charlton comes in for a limping Bellini. Nyberg is flanked to the right, Boyce to the left. Charlton is slotted inside of Boyce to the left side. Detmer looking. Detmer running out of trouble. He is at the 8. He is at the 7. Perhaps the 6-yard line. Salito was open deep in the end zone, but Detmer never saw him. The Rainbows converged on him short of the first down. That will bring up fourth down. Remember, a field goal really doesn't do BYU any good. They need to score here. Detmer looking to the bench now. Matsuzaki comes in with the play. Fourth down. Remember momentum? Well, it's on the line again. Detmer rolling. Detmer being chased. Throws. It is caught. 
but short of the first down. Now they say no. I believe it's short of the first down it is. That is a turnover, and the Rainbows will put the ball in play deep in their own territory. He found Boyd, almost backhanded the ball to him, but not enough for the first down. Well, I think you're going to see a couple things here, and one of them is the kind of tenacity that Ty Detmer has. Under pressure, just a flip across his body to Andy Boyce. The Rainbows had five yards to play with. They give up four of them, but more importantly, they get the ball back on down. And BYU comes away with nothing. It remains 41-21 to with 4.03 left to play in the third period. Rainbows will come out in the power eye backfield of Stevenson, Roxana Brew, and Jamal Farmer. Gabriel, the throw from the end zone. Throws long. Branch off his fingertips at the 30-yard line. Boy, you talk about a gutsy call. Urban Lee and Derwin Gray covering on the play, but Branch was open, and the ball just off the fingertips. Second down and 10 from the Rainbow three-yard line. Jim, what Rainbow fans have to love to see here is that Bob Wagner and this Rainbow team are playing to win this game and just not to avoid losing it. As so often happens, people try to sit in the lead, but in the shadow of your own goalpost, that is a very gutsy call. 3.56 left in the third. Simple wide receiver to the left side. Ball is given to Farmer out over the five to the six-yard line. That will bring a third down for the Rainbows. Rich Kalfusi, number 59, tackles Jamal Farmer. And a big third down play here for the Bows. Rich Kalfusi, number 59, right in front of you. You watch him fight off a block, very strong, keeps his eyes up, gets rid of the block, and grabs a hold of Jamal Farmer. Kalfusi, the bedrock of that defensive front three for the Cougars. 3.27 left. Third quarter, third down, and seven. Gabriel to throw from his own end zone. Throws long. It is incomplete. Threw it short and wide of branch. And that will bring a fourth down to the Rainbows. Will have to kick out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Josh Arnold covering on that last play. So Salito should have excellent field position as he backs up only to midfield. 3.17 left in the third. 41-21. Rainbows with a 20-point lead. But deep in their own territory, BYU with 10 men. Now at least nine men on the line of scrimmage. Haynes gets the snap from center. Roots it out of there the best he can. Ball will bounce it. Takes a sideward bounce. And goes out of bounds at the Rainbow 38-yard line. So when we come back, BYU will have an excellent field position to come back in this game. We're with you all the way. What's never far away, no matter where you go? Who can make the difference between just a trip and a vacation? Where can you find a place that's always up and running when you are? Cougar rooting section visible there in front of you. Very quiet right now, waiting to see if Ty Detmer can pull another one of his magical acts. They've got great field position. First and 10 on the Rainbow 38 with which to put the offense into gear here. Comparison between the two quarterbacks, Detmer 18 for 33, 280 yards and two touchdowns. Gabriel 18 for 32, 282 yards and three touchdowns. And the Heisman Trophy winner has thrown four interceptions. Gabriel has thrown one. Detmer back to pass. Detmer throws. It is almost picked off. Tony Pankey. And Detmer getting up very slowly. Scott Charlton was the intended receiver downfield. Tony Pankey almost picking it off, and Detmer down on his haunches. And we have a penalty play. Holding against the rainbow. Holding. Defense. 10-yard penalty. First down. 
Now the Rainbows call for holding. We've also seen them call for a clip on the kickoff. Let's take a look at what happens to Ty Detmer. Throws that, and David Tanovasa puts a lick on him from the side. Detmer exposed a little bit, but Detmer, for a small guy, very durable. Well, the penalty moves the ball inside the 30 to the 28-yard line of the Rainbow. 2.59 left in the third. Detmer to throw. Has time. Goes over the middle, completes a big Chris Smith. Smith at the 20 and slips. As the dribble has stopped, slips. And they will give him forward progress all the way to the 17-yard line. Chris Smith, a big target. They like to use him right short over the middle of the way a lot of teams use running backs. Smith, a good ball carrier after he gets it, but that little bit of miss that was falling earlier has made the footing a little unsteady, and it catches Chris Smith. 2.35 left in the third, first and 10 for Brigham Young at the BYU 17. Smith in motion. Detmer gives the ball to Tui Pelotu. 15, Tui Pelotu all the way to the 10-yard line. Louis Pelotu almost stumbled as he got that ball, but credit the big back, 5'11", 205. Good, solid running by Peter Tui, uh, Tui Pelotu, Brian May, and Mike Kayam there to lead him down the field, the offensive line. And the ball now at the 11, second down and four. Remember, at the conclusion of tonight's game, Bobby and I will be selecting the GTE Hawaiian Tell Most Viable Rainbow Hawaiian Tell will contribute to the general scholarship fund of the University of Hawaii in the name of that player who went beyond the call. Second down. Ball is given to Charlton on a sweep. Gets by Robinson. Gets inside the five to the four-yard line. That's enough for a first down. Charlton headed around the right side, had Gavin Robertson in pursuit. Robertson actually managed to get a hand on him, not enough of the jersey. And I think you're seeing the Rainbows putting BYU in a position where they're taking, they're trying to take away a work on their pass coverage, giving up a little bit on the run, and BYU's decided they've got to take advantage of it. Iberg and Bellini go into the game. They are the fleet receivers. Charlton goes out along with Matsuzaki. Iberg has caught a touchdown pass, also Andy Boyce. Boyce remains into the game. He is flanked to the left side. First down goal to go from the four-yard line. Tui Pelotu, single running back. Detmer rolling. Detmer at the five. Detmer being chased now, throws. Touchdown, BYU. To Bellini. Bellini works his way free in the end zone. Detmer ad lib. And that is a touchdown for BYU. Three touchdown passes now for Ty Detmer. Well, the way Detmer avoids pressure, you really got to love the way he does this. He's got rainbows all around him, never takes his eye off downfield, keeps looking for the receiver, finally finds one in the end zone as he sees Bellini for the touchdown. Well, that tightens up the score now. 41-27. And Kaufman in. Line for the extra point. And that extra point missed by Darren Kahn now starts to become a factor. Kick is up and good. So again, the Rainbows hurt by penalty and field position. And they see their lead start to shrink even more. 41 to 28 in favor of Hawaii over Brigham Young. And Hawaii now must respond with one minute and two seconds left to play here in the third. Brigham Young getting back in it. They trail 35 to 14 at halftime. It is now 41-28. And the BYU crowd has just been given a wake-up call. So they are contributing to the din here at uh, Aloha Stadium. Rainbows have to put together a consistent drive, eat up some time, take this game into the fourth quarter, and put some more points on the board. Detmer. 295 yards now, closing in on another 300-yard game. 24-35, three touchdowns, four interceptions. And there you see the scoring drive by Brigham Young, Con Smith, and uh, also Jeff Seidner, deep for the rainbow, standing inside the 10-yard line. Kaufman again to kick off. This play starts to rock again, literally. Kaufman will kick it to Seidner, takes it at the goal line. He will try to return it. Seidner hit at the 20, breaks a tackle, hit at the 24, and goes out of bounds. 
Rainbows have got to get a couple of first downs here, Jim. They need the sustained drive. We just saw BYU get the touchdown. Took them two minutes and five seconds. These guys can score points in a hurry. So Garrett Gabriel's charge now is to keep. He doesn't. He wants to score points at the end of it, but he wants to use some clock, wants to advance the ball, and use all the facets of the offense. And here's something to ponder. His receivers have been open, but his passes in the later stages here, the third period, have not been on the money. They have been high. They have been low. They have been wide. First down from the 24. Gabriel to throw yet another time. Does throw. Passes high. Incomplete. Intended for Larry Conn Smith at the 30-yard line. So Gabriel not on the money here in the second half. 49 seconds left in the third period. Rainbow's leading 41-28. And the time, Jim, that he has been on the money, the one to Brant who was catchable and one to Dane MacArthur has been dropped. So Rainbows are going to have to get that kind of sink that they had going so well in the first half. Branch and Seidner flank to the far side. Branch is picked up by Irvin Lee, and Seidner is watched by Norm Dixon. Gabriel again to throw. In trouble. Now throws incomplete. Nothing really materialized there. BYU looking for the intentional grounding call, but they will not get it. And 43 seconds left, third down and 10. And BYU now has seized control of this game. Rainbows have been unable uh, to gain yardage. And Hope now has come back to the BYU sideline. And, of course, they have been used to scoring many points. They average 44 points a game. Third down and 10. Rainbows need the first down here. Gabriel rolling. This time he has the time. Does throw. First down. Branch coming back for the ball, making the catch at the 38-yard line. If you talk about doing it when you have to, the first drive in the second half, Garrett Gabriel looked at third and 18. He made the completion. Then here it's third and 10, and this time the ball's right on the money. Gabriel's had success sprinting out to avoid the pressure, and he fires this one on the line. Branch goes down to cover it up. That's a huge first down for the Rainbows. First down for the Bows at their own 38-yard line. Branch and Con Smith are flanked now to the right side, and they will change football. 21 seconds left to play in the third period. A sellout Aloha Stadium, one of those games that has so much magic to it, so much emotion, that the fans here are carried along by the emotion of the players and the hitting that takes place and the great expertise of this game. It is a marvel. Pitch back. This is MacArthur. MacArthur to midfield first down. MacArthur almost broke that. Dane MacArthur on that pitch around to the near side. That is the play that has really paid huge dividends for the Rainbows tonight. And Jim, if you watch Rainbow tapes, I think you're not, you don't see MacArthur employed as a runner very often. I mean, they'll do it occasionally, but they don't use them as much as, say, they like to use Seidner. They generally like to, when they run option, a lot of times it seems that the pitch man has been accounted for. He's not even been open. And that's the end of the third quarter. Rainbows lead 41-28 to 28 over Brigham Young with one quarter left in this magnificent game. After day. The Rainbows of Hawaii struggling for a winning season. They are six and five, have taken the number four team in the nation with the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback into the fourth quarter. And the Rainbows of Hawaii playing inspired again. Lead BYU 41 to 28. First and 10 from their own 49 yard line. Branch and Con Smith are to the near side. Ball is given to Farmer, he goes nowhere. Helmet comes off. Pete Hartston there to make the stop. Helmet comes off of Jamal Farmer. Second down and 10 yards to go for the Bows. They have been playing on the edge here in the second half. They have one touchdown. They came out. They made it look easy going up the field and scoring early on in the third period. Since that time, it's been all Brigham Young with the scoring. Second down. Gabriel steps up. Throws long down the middle. Steiner. He catches it. It's a touchdown. 
from scoring and the drizzle starts again here at Aloha Stadium. They come out and that power on. They give the ball to Farmer. Farmer wedging to the one. Penalty flag. We may have movement. Rainbows may have moved in that offensive line. Offside, Brigham Young. So that will move the ball half the distance to the goal, and the Rainbows will still have first down. We are in the fourth quarter, 13 minutes and 56 seconds left. And that's really all the time left in this 1990 season for the Rainbows. BYU will go on to the Holiday Bowl and play Texas A&M. Gabriel now has passed for 344 yards. Here's Gene Worth. Defense, offside, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Both have the ball. At the one and a half. Another extremely delightful effort by the Rainbow against Brigham Young. Again, the power off. Stevenson of Brew and Farmer. It is Farmer. Waiting for the signal. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown. Farmer on the dive, following the big guys. He hurdles over BYU, trying to push him back. Unsuccessful, though, as Farmer able to cross the plane. Now, Jim, the situation with the Rainbows up 19 points, 20 doesn't mean as much as 21 does. I believe the Rainbows are going to go for two here. Farmer, three touchdowns tonight against Brigham Young. 12 carries, 23 yards. Tom Smith flanked way to the right, picked up by Mitchell, and Branch to the left side. He's watched by Urban Lee. Going for two. In motion is MacArthur. Gabriel Rowley sets up, throws off of MacArthur, caught by Branch. No, Tom Smith, Tom Smith. Two points. Amazing. Remarkable concentration. I don't think Tom Smith the intended receiver at all, Jim. I think you got that one exactly right. Off, off the hands of one receiver and into the hands of another. Rainbow's lead, 49, 28. Just a remarkable play on the two-point conversion. Not only does Con Smith have to concentrate on a deflected pass, but he's got to get around number 30 in the white shirt. He loops around the back and makes the grab. Great concentration by Larry Con Smith. Larry Con Smith appearing in the deep corner of the end zone, and he was bracketed by uh, Brian Mitchell. He was able to come around Mitchell and make uh, an almost indescribable catch in the corner. It is now 49 to 28, and the Rainbows with seven touchdowns now. Seven points, and they are back on track. 49-28 over Brigham Young, 13-31 left. Scott Charlton and Stacy Corley again deep. Now this time it will go to the big guy, Charlton, on the 13. Charlton over the 20 to the 22. And he Nakagawa there to knock him to the turf. So now the Heisman Trophy winner, and take nothing away from Ty Detmer and what he has done. But the Rainbows are saying to the Heisman Trophy winner, you just can't parade out here with your trophy and expect to take it to it. You've got to prove it. Well, it has gone into the fourth quarter now, and Detmer still trails. 
Boyce to the far side. And Nyberg to the near side. Mike Salito is the single setback. Detmer to throw. As time throws over the middle. It is complete to Charlton. Is that an incompletion? And they rule it an incompletion. Well, Jim, that was about as close as it could be. But Charlton coming but over the middle. We saw Bellini do this before very successfully. But he's bobbling a little bit and never really had possession. Excellent call by the official. That was. That was an excellent call. Second down and 10 from the 22. 13-18 left. Here in the fourth quarter. Detmer again to throw. Little dump pass dropped by Salido. Jim, the crowd rocking the joint right up behind the rainbow defense right now. Detmer seeing he's getting pressure, trying to throw the little dumps. The guys coming out of the backfield. Salido, had he been able to hang on to the ball, had plenty of room in front of him, just took his eye off it, didn't see the ball into his hands, and it cost him. He puts his teammates into a third and ten, a very difficult situation. Depper now has 5,162 yards for the season. He is faced with third and ten here. Against the fired up bowl defense, Detmer calls a timeout. And apparently he didn't like the way Nyberg lined up at wide receiver off to the left. 13-12 left to play in the game. And the Rainbows continue to lead. Rainbows leading 49 to 28. Third down and 10. In motion is Chris Smith. Sets up now on the right side. Detmer rolling out of trouble. Detmer is sacked. Fumbles the ball. Out of bounds. At the 18. BYU maintains possession. Mark Odom. And they gave him credit for that first sack. The WWF count. That's his second sack of the night. His 36th for his career. Mark Odom playing with intensity, fights through a double team, comes around, he's chasing Detmer, almost loses his footing, but never gives it up. Here was an easy chance that the Rainbow's been able to hold on, but as it is, they'll make BYU punt from deep in their own territory. Kaufman back inside the five, and deep for the Rainbow's, the little guy, Jeff Seidner. Seidner not calling for the fair catch. Backs up, takes it at the 35-yard line, trying to get to the wall. Being chased, Seidner dragged down from behind at the 33. Excellent job of coverage by David Henderson, number 10 of BYU. And the Rainbows have the ball with 12 minutes and 52 seconds left. 47-yard punt. What a punt by Kaufman. And a minus three-yard return. Kaufman's longest punt of the year, by the way, 61 yards. So now the Bows leading 49 to 28. The Bows scored 28 points in the first quarter. They added seven in the second, six in the third, and they've scored eight here in the fourth. <laughs> well, you are on TV. <laughs> That's a great sign. First down and 10. Rainbows come out on a wishbone for the first time in this game. Ball is given to Jamal Farmer. Farmer over the 35 to the 36. Rainbows now want the clock to tick. Every tick of the clock puts more pressure on Detmer and the BYU offense to respond in this game. But the Rainbows have to put together a consistent drive. Well, I think that's exactly right, Jim. They want to get a couple of first downs. You've got to move the chains now. I think they'd like to run. If they can get three or four yards on first down, they'd like to be able to keep it on the ground. Rainbows again come out in the wishbone. Branch and Tom Smith with the wide receivers. Ball is kept now. Pitch back with it is Seidner. Seidner turns the corner. 40. Leaps over the man. 45 midfield. He is amazing. Amazing. You know, watch Jeff Seidner come around the, the corner here. He accelerates. You'll watch him hurdle. He even hurdles. He does a little bicycle. Those legs keep going just in case terra firma comes down underneath him. He keeps going, and he's got a big first down for the Bows. And he does a little join with the BYU reserves. First down for the Rainbows on the 49-yard line of Brigham Young. 
12.06 left to play in the game, and the Rainbow's leading 49 to 28. Gabriel gives it to Farmer. Farmer finds running room. 40. Farmer to the 35. First down. Boy, it really opened up for him on the right side. Uh, that's what Jamal Farmer is so good at. The whole plug, he bounces outside. That's what he gives the rainbow offense. A little special when there's no hole. He can slide down the line and get outside. Jamal Farmer will load when he gets open in the open field. Clock ticking. 11.47 left to play. There you see the totals on Farmer. He has scored three touchdowns tonight. First down from the 35-yard line of Brigham Young. Again, it's given to Farmer, but this time, Rich Kalfusi is able to plug him up right away. And they bat him around in the mix master in the middle of the field. Well, Rich Kalfusi, number 59, this guy just comes at you every single play working against Peter Pauly, and he's just going to fight it, fight it, and still manages to get a leg of Jamal Farmer. That's great intensity and effort defensively. Gain of the play of one, second down at nine. Con Smith to the right, Derek Branch to the left. Now taking up station are the wingbacks, MacArthur and Seidman. Gabriel with all the time he wants. Throws, it is complete to MacArthur. Breaking tackle, gets inside the 20 for the 19. That away from Scott Giles. Well, Dane MacArthur going out in his senior season with a tremendous effort. He's been great off the option, great on his route. This one, he cuts to the outside. He beats the linebacker, Giles, to catch the ball, and then makes sure he gets enough yardage to ensure a rainbow first down. Rainbows have the ball inside the BYU 20. Con Smith and Branch. And Gabriel really getting no pressure at all in the last few times he's gone to throw the ball. Gives it to Farmer. 15, Farmer to the 13. Good hole opened up that time by Peter Viliamu. Sean Ching and Doug Violette. Alema Fictise Manu there to make the stop for Brigham Young. The ball inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Gain of five, second down at five. And there you see the most important factor in this game. Under 10 minutes. The rainbows come to the line. Again, it's Farmer. And that will bring up third down. P.C. Simano there to make the stop for Brigham Young. But the rainbows very content to let that clock run, take their time. And they are putting together a very consistent drive. And this drive has win written all over it. This w is we, I am. This is what we talked about, Jim, moving the chains, chewing up the clock, making that clock the 12th man on the rainbow side. I think you come back, you talked about momentum. You went back to that last rainbow touchdown. That seemed to give both the offense and the defense some confidence. Right now, the rainbows believe they can shove it down BYU's throat. And timeout is called by Gabriel on third down and two and a half. So 9.06 left to play in the game. The Rainbows 56 to 14 winners last year. They lead 49 to 28 in 1990, and they're closing in on a second big win. Peaks and valleys for Lavelle Edwards and Ty Detmer tonight. An emotional roller coaster, and uh, right now it's all uphill for the Cougars. 9:06 left. Rainbows have the ball at the 12-yard line of Brigham Young, and they lead in this game 49 to 28. Big third down play. Third down about two and a half. Jamal Farmer remains a single setback. Double wide receiver now sets up to the right side. Gabriel fakes the play action to Farmer, throws over the middle. It is caught. No, they say no. He did not have possession. Oh, Seidner. I thought Seidner reached out and was able to get the ball in for the touchdown. That'll bring up fourth down, and we also have a penalty flag holding on the rainbows. Well, that's to be expected. So that'll bring, uh, that'll be a 10-yard penalty. It also brings up fourth down. Holding 
against the offense, 10 yard penalty, still third down. Now the holding may be called on Peter Pale, number 70. There he is, he's to, to the right, right next to 77 in the white. Now he's got his hands on him, that's like the calf roping exhibit. Peter Pale not going to let the defender get at his quarterback, Garrett Gabriel. But it is third down and 13. The ball now at the 22-yard line. BYU again does not blitz. They rush forward. The ball thrown down the middle. Leaping attempt and incomplete by Seidner. Seidner really drew a crowd. Derwin Gray was there. Rocky Beagle and Dave Porter. And that will bring up fourth down. And Gabriel took a hit. And he is very slow in getting up. Eight minutes and 34 seconds. So Zarin Khan will come in. Last time the Rainbows uh, lined up for a field goal, it was a fake attempt, and they came up short of the first down. This will be a legitimate field goal attempt. They put it on the uh, 29, or at least that's where Santiago will place the ball down. Zarin Khan will try a 39-yarder, his longest of the season, 42. And a slight angle from the left side with 8 minutes, 34 seconds left. Trying to give uh, the Rainbow three more points. It is snapped. It is kicked on its way. It is good. The Bulls now lead it 52 to 28 with eight minutes and 29 seconds left. The drizzle begins again at Aloha Stadium. But that does not dampen the spirit of this team trying for a winning season. And the seniors playing their last game. What a way to go out as a rainbow with a victory over a team that sets the standard of excellence in the Western Athletic Conference, the Cougars of BYU. Well, if you're a rainbow fan, this night as clear as that kick as it goes through the goalpost. The Rainbows playing perhaps their best game of the season. The final game, as you mentioned, for many of the players. And there's one of the seasons. Darren Kahn, not expected to play much, but when Jason Allen went down, he has answered the call. Darren Kahn, one of his number of seniors, having an outstanding game here tonight. Number of tickets sold for tonight's game, 49,695. And 45,729 went through the turnstile. It is another one of those great BYU-Hawaii games. Velasco kicks off, and it will go to Scott Charlton at the 10. He lumbers up the middle, gets to the 20, and the green shirts able to swarm over him as he gets to the 24, and it will be first down from around that point. Rainbows previous to tonight, the most points scored in a game this season, 45 against Cal State Fullerton. And the Cougars, most points allowed in a game, 36 against Washington State. Rainbows have scored more against BYU tonight than any other team that the Cougars have faced this season, 52. In fact, last year, 56 was the most allowed uh, by BYU. Detmer to throw, does so. It is complete. Close to the first down, to Nyberg, and they wrestle him to the turf. They will give him forward progress, and that should be enough for the first down. Kim McLeod there to make the stop. Eight minutes and seven seconds left to play. Ty Detmer now has gone over 300 yards, and he keeps that streak going. Detmer came in uh, to this game with 23 straight 300-yard games. He now has 24, and Detmer has set six NCAA records in this game alone. So the Heisman Trophy winner continues to work. That ball almost picked off. It was intended for Boyce. Harper, who had three interceptions, almost had his fourth. Well, Kenny Harper closed very quickly, decided to make the gamble. When you have a three interception night, you feel like you can get to everything. And he does get there in time. But at the, at the, when he does get there, the hands of the receiver also wanted and Kenny Harper unable to hold on. Had he held on, though, he was going in for six. 7.58 left to play in the game. Second down and 10 from the 35-yard line for Brigham Young. Detmer fumbles. 
picks it up. He's amazing. Throws the boy, circles around, and almost makes the catch. That's the kind of workmanship that Detmer and his receivers had. Detmer fumbled the ball, picked it up as a shortstop, then threw in a hurry. And Boyce, circling around, almost made one of those catches that could become legend between these two. Well, Jim, like the song says, he's had his photo opportunity. Now he's just looking for a shot at redemption. It's under eight minutes left. I don't even know if Ty Detmer can pull the Cougars out of this. But he obviously still working very hard at just that. 21 of 40 now for Detmer. 305 yards, three touchdowns, third and 10 from the 35. Detmer with time. Throws. It is incomplete. Harper and Boyce. Boy, Harper had Boyce really covered. BYU wanted interference, not so. And it will be fourth down, and Kaufman will come in to punt for Brigham Young with 7.45 left to play. Well, you're gonna, we're going to watch them come outside. Harper working against Boyce. Hey, I'm not sure right there if Boyce was playing the football. He was playing Kenny Harper. That maybe could have gone as offensive interference. Seidner deep again for the rainbow. He has had... A tremendous night. Kaufman back. Ready to kick. Rainbow jumping around. Waiting for the snap from center. And Kaufman will root it. Good kick. Again, no fair catch. Taken by Seidner. He gets nailed on a penalty. really got nailed that time by number 34 John Christensen and there was no fair catch and Christensen was right on it well, you've got to give the man an opportunity to catch the football and I'm not sure that he could have held up had he wanted to well, that's a lick taken by Jeff Seidner, but I'll tell you, Seidner jumped right up, he started to do a little gun, and when he saw the flag, he was able to be cooled down a little bit, but Christensen put a lick on him. Detmer now 21 of 40, 305 yards, three touchdowns, and four interceptions. The Rainbows have the ball with seven minutes and 38 seconds left. And the Rainbows able to put together a consistent drive uh, that ended in a field goal the last trip up the field and they hope to do the same thing here they get it under four under three minutes it is all over here come the rainbows they have played magnificently in this final of 1990 branch and con smith wide to the left and gabriel again to throw does so and throws it wide of branch branch appeared to slip in going for the ball incomplete second down and ten derwin gray covering for Brigham Young. Rainbow still attacking offensively. Could keep it on the ground now. In fact, I think that might, at this stage of the game, that might be a wise choice. You prevent the possibility. I mean, who is it? Woody Hayes who said, uh, the four things that can happen when you throw and three of them are bad. Or, do you play the kind of game that your players want to play? Just let it all hang out. They lead 52 to 28. They've been playing on the edge all night. Keep it going. We'll see. Ball is kept by Gabriel. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. Gabriel may score. Chased by Mitchell. They get him down inside the 20. Penalty flag has been thrown. A penalty flag has been thrown way upfield at the Rainbow 43-yard line. Offside is declined. And that run by Garrett Gabriel will stand. Garrett Gabriel has become so much more comfortable. The pitch relationship not there. He tucks it under. Garrett Gabriel runs about a 4840, better speed than he's generally been credited with. And he gets it all the way down and picks up 43 yards inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. Gabriel went to the sideline for the moment. Now he is back. The ball just outside the 16-yard line. What a way to end it. What a way to end his rainbow career. The all-time passing leader. And the crowd beginning to chant now. The ball is given up the middle to Jamal Farmer. Knights inside the 15 to the 14. Rocky Beagle there to make the tackle for Brigham Young. And the rainbows starting to celebrate now. And this crowd starting to celebrate. Harkening back for last year's 56 to 14. 
And then the real underdog, here's BYU, number four in the country. BYU going again for the Holiday Bowl. BYU boasting the Heisman Trophy winner. And the Rainbows, the decided underdog, a team playing just for a winning season. They are on top, 52 to 28, with six minutes and 25 seconds left. It is storybook time again. Ball is given to Seidner. Seidner to the 10. Seidner all the way down to the five-yard line. Amazing. That's the only adjective. Amazing. So Jeff Seidner gives you so much effort after initial contact. I think it's part of what makes him so special. That and the unusual quickness on the first couple steps. He's hit right here. Most guys are down. The great balance. He fights further. And it's only Rocky or rather Scott Giles able to bring him down at the five-yard line. Jeff Seidner. Jeff Seidner all whack this year. One of the most exciting runners in the country. Look out, Rocket. They'll match up next year in the final game. Hawaii against Notre Dame right here at Aloha. 5.52 left. First and goal to go. Ball is pitched to Farmer. Trying to get outside. Trying to turn the corner. He does. He's at the three. Flies out of bounds. Well, Jamal couldn't decide, Jim, where he was going to cut that upfield. By the time he made his decision, his feet came out from under him. The Rainbows actually having fun now. Taking it down to the final five minutes and 43 seconds. Jim, this team has come a long way this, this year. I have to say, this is a very successful rainbow season with this game. It looks like it's going to end up this way. I mean, they lost all their offensive linemen except for Sean Ching. Had to play with redshirt freshmen. Some guys who left in the defensive secondary that they thought they have. They fought through all the adversity and saved the best for last. Ball is given to Farmer. Close to the goal line. Inside the one-yard line. Frank Sean Abreu, excuse me, not Farmer, but Frank Sean Abreu. He of the Frank Abreu family. I think the last count, almost 20 of them. Well, the ball is inside the one, and the clock is ticking, and the fans are celebrating, and the Rainbows are having fun. What a way to win 1990. Again, the power eye. His fourth touchdown? Not this time. And that will bring a fourth down. Should the Rainbow score here, they will have scored more points against BYU than they did last year. than a yard to go. The power eye again. Gabriel. Keep it. Touchdown. Rainbows now lead it by 30. And Khan will try to give the Rainbows a 31-point lead with 410 left. He does. 59 to 28. Let the celebration begin. Gabriel with a great play here. It's all in the face. BYU is sending that power offense. He tucks it. It's right on his hip. He scampers to the outside. And Garrett Gabriel with the easy score. What a way for him to cap off his career. Here's Bob Wagner. Pretty stern for a guy up by 30 points. 
not much to give you away what's happening in the ball game right here. Still very solemn at this part of the game. We get a look at Lavelle Edwards, and he's very stoic on the sideline. No movement from him whatsoever. You just look at the coaches, you'd have a tough time knowing which team was up by 30 points. And as Gabriel went in to score his third rushing touchdown of the year, he went to the corner of the end zone, and it was as if he was taking his final foul. 59 to 28, 4-10 left. Does lightning strike twice? Apparently so. I guess if they had a vote, they'd vote for Garrett Gabriel. He certainly has put together a performance tonight that quite frankly has overshadowed Ty Detmer. The kid for the Rainbow Seniors, I think this is the game they're going to take with them for the rest of their lives. You remember the last one after the tough loss to Colorado State to come back and to finish in front of a big home crowd with a game like this is something they'll cherish forever. Alaska kicks off to Charlton. Charlton up the sideline and free. Being chased by Pang Key. The big guy is dragged down at the 25-yard line of the Rainbow. And Charlton, a lumbering type of back, possesses some fine speed. He broke through on the far sideline, and it was a foot race. Uh, you're right, Jim. You don't expect a guy that weighs 220 pounds to be able to motor like this. He gets the left side return. He breaks some tackles. Tony Pankey had the angle on him, and he very nearly couldn't catch him. He was slowed up by Sal Velasco, and Tony Pankey finally makes the stop at the 24-yard line. 59 points is the most points ever scored against Brigham Young. Ever. First down for the Cougars. Stepmer, the throw. He does throw. It is incomplete. Slipping on the play was Boyd. I do not believe that's a penalty flag down. I think that's a big leap. Gabriel, 22 of 40, 361 yards. And three touchdowns in this game. Three minutes, 55 seconds. And Detmer, the Heisman Trophy winner, will move on. He will move on to postseason play. He'll fly back to New York and be presented the trophy. Boyce to the left. And Matsuzaki to the right. Detmer looking. Now throws over the middle. That's complete to Charlton. Charlton with a good move at the 15-yard line. Charlton fumbles the ball. The Rainbows, the Rainbows, the Rainbows may have it or may not have it. And BYU apparently has ended up with it inside the 10-yard line. And Jim, it's Micah Matsuzaki that fought that ball against overwhelming odds, about five Rainbows around it. Jordan, after he gets hit by the, the man in front, Tressler, is going to get banged from behind. When he does by Mark Odom, the ball is loose, and the Rainbow's thinking right now, hey, we can pick this up and run with it. They're absolutely right. It's beyond the neutral zone, but no one can finally grab it, and Micah Matsuzaki, the only white jersey around, comes up with it. Detmer. Detmer is back. David Tanobasa comes in to sack him. The Tanobasa, that is his third sack of the season. Rainbow's able to just pin the end back and come full tilt, and now they're getting some great pressure. Maha Tanobasa, David Tanobasa, the, the family Tanobasa, the football family. Detmer rolling out of trouble, being chased by Maha Tanobasa, and Odom, Odom misses it. Detmer comes back. Rainbow, another Rainbow misses it. Detmer at the 20. Detmer at the 15, he will run. Dives to the 10-yard line. That'll bring up third down, and for all of that running, a two-yard game. And you can see the scrambling quality of Ty Detmer. And, Detmer. and Neil Ford is just exhausted, the offensive lineman of uh, BYU. Boy, Detmer, extremely elusive. Not too many guys have been able to stay out of the grass out of a charging Mark Odom when he gets a clean shot. Third down and goal to go. The ball just inside the 10. Detmer gives it to Charlton. He's hit by Tanovaca. The two Tanovacas have it. That'll bring up fourth down. Rainbow's really making a statement now. 
coming up on two minutes. And BYU, with this loss, will fall out of NCAA championship contention. If there is one thing that the Rainbow Victory tonight will do, it will eliminate Brigham Young from any thought of a national championship. Fourth down, goal to go from the 13. Detmer looking for Boyd, checks off Boyd. Detmer steps out of trouble, still looking. He's hit as he throws, incomplete, and the Rainbows will take over. And Odom, the senior, playing his last game, hugs the Heisman Trophy winner. 135 left. And the Rainbows will take over, and they will run out the clock, and they will win the game and they will defeat BYU for the second year in a row. Ah, the memory. Mark Odom with one minute and 35 seconds left in his rainbow career. now have put in their reserves Michael Carter is a quarterback and Carter will give the ball up the middle to Eddie K. Aloha and we have some pushing and shoving going on and Jeff Brantley Brantley will be ejected from the game and Brantley one of the uh, rainbow seniors not exactly a way to end your career Bob Wagner not very happy with David Brantley right now. Wants the Rainbows to go out of here. The good ball, personal foul against the offense, disqualification. And Bob Wagner wants the Rainbows to go out of here with class. They got a nice win, and they want to keep control and order down on the field right now. Bradley right here, the whistle's already blown, just a slurp fest. He is going after Derwin Gray and finally rips his helmet off. That is not sportsmanlike at all. And they've just thrown uh, the water bucket on uh, Bob Wagner as he can celebrate his second straight victory over Brigham Young. Second down for the Rainbows. Ball is kept by Carter trying to get around the corner. He takes a lick at the 15-yard line. And the clock will continue to run now. It will be third down. And we'll show you the dousing of Bob Wagner. Oh, he got the one with the ice chips. Ooh, that's chilly. Well, you see Paul Johnson, the offensive coordinator, just to the right of your screen. He has put together another offense that has conquered BYU. Well, you see Sal Velasco, Garrett Gabriel, and Sean Robinson celebrating their final moments in a rainbow uniform. This could be the last play of the game. Third down and nine, kept by Carter. And Carter succumbs to the pressure at the 15-yard line. 22 seconds left. BYU will not call a timeout. And the rainbows will end up winning it. And they will win it by scoring the most points ever over a BYU team. And I ask you, is it better the second time around? And the answer is yes. Trophy winner, Ty Detmer, on the day that he is awarded college football's highest honor, goes in against the University of Hawaii team fighting for a winning season, a team that has struggled in the whack, a team not going to any postseason affair. And Detmer runs up against a team that plays its finest game of the season in the final game of the season. And the Rainbows defeat BYU for the second year in a row 59 to 28 the score.
Why tell most valuable rainbows for tonight's game? The 1990 senior class, 25 seniors, played their final game tonight for the University of Hawaii, including uh, the quarterback Garrett Gabriel, 361 yards and three touchdowns tonight, and outperforming the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Ty Detmer, who had 319 yards and three touchdowns. But the 25 seniors, and, well, Sean will be back next year. He's a junior. 25 seniors playing their final game tonight for the Bows, and the Bows able to score the most points ever against BYU, 59 to 28. Hawaiian Tell is pleased to contribute to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Hawaii in the name of the 25 members of the 1990 senior class. GTE Hawaiian Tell, beyond the call. There's a secret to being a good pediatrician. About ready to start the senior walk here for the 25 seniors something that has uh, become a tradition. And these are the 25 seniors, Guy Benoza, Greg Chistikoff, Darren Kahn, Kahn with a field goal tonight, John Neal, Pepe Tau Talatasi, Sal Velasco, David Brantley, John Freeman, Tony Goodene, David Tanavasa had an excellent game tonight, Jerry Winfrey, Sean Abru, Sean Robinson, steady in the offensive line, Alan Smith, out with an injury, Joaquin Barnett, Larry Kahn Smith, great catch tonight. Garrett Gabriel, what a performance. David Maeva, Dane MacArthur, perhaps his best game. Kim McLeod in that secondary, Mark Odom, two sacks tonight. Gavin Robertson, Davida Sangapolo, Mike Tressor will miss Mike Le Moy Tour. So the Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer, 22 out of 44, 319 yards, three touchdowns and four interceptions, walks off the field knowing that there, there is a, a little downer to the day that he is given the highest honor in college football. And the celebration by the Rainbows knowing that for the second year in a row, they have beaten the team that set the standard of excellence in the Western Athletic Conference. And for Mark Odom, what a way to end his Rainbow career with two sacks, the all-time sack leader for the Bulls. Bobby, pleasure working with you this year. Hope we can do it again. Pleasure and a privilege being part of the KHNL team in 1990, Jim. And that'll do it for our KHNL crew, and we put them up with the best in the country. They are truly Hawaii's very own. This is Jim Leahy for Bobby Curran and everybody at uh, Channel 13. The final score tonight, 59-28 to 28, Hawaii over Brigham Young. Many alohas from aloha. The Hawaii's Nissan dealers. We're nothing like anything you ever thought. Last night in the final game, Hawaii scored a major upset, defeating the number four ranked Cougars of Brigham Young 59 to 28. The Rainbow set a U8 single game record with over 660 yards in total offense. And Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer was intercepted four times by the Rainbow defense. Join us as we celebrate the victory on the Bob Wagner Show. 22 seconds left. BYU will not call a timeout. And the Rainbows will end up winning. And they will win it by scoring the most points ever over a BYU team. And I ask you, is it better the second time around? And the answer is yes. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy. Welcome to the Bob Wagner Show. And I'm with the head football coach of the University of Hawaii, Bob Wagner. Big time win last night. Not only is it the second win over BYU, the most points ever scored against uh, a team that really sets the standard of excellence in the Western Athletic Conference because of their championships, because of their record. But thrown into the mix last night was the Heisman Trophy and all of that and the hype and the national attention. The Rainbows really performed well against a, a team that was heavily favored going in. Oh, no doubt. You know, great win for the program. I think a, a great win from the aspect uh, a lot of talk had been made about, well, hey, you know, they were going to get us back for last year. I mean, they had uh, that motivation. They had the motivation to play for a national championship, et cetera. Uh, it wasn't going to happen again. And for go our guys to go out there and play uh, really well, really hard all night, and get the win was really gratifying. And then to play our best game of the season, the last game of the season. You know, we've been making pro progress all year, and, uh, you know, it's one of those deals you wish you could keep playing. We also ended up with a, with a winning season. 7-5 record is a, is a real solid record in college football these days. So just a, a lot of positives from last night's game. 
We'll be back to take a look at the highlights of last night's big victory over Brigham Young when we come back from these commercial messages. Welcome back, everybody, to the Bob Wagner Show. Quickly, let's go to the highlights of last night's victory over Brigham Young. We come out of the blocks really well. We got the auction going. Uh, you, know, you know, we were able to you know, get some advantages with formations a little bit and whatnot, just uh, kind of, you know, picking and choosing. You know, Garrett just you know, was throwing the ball streaming from a great catch by Dave MacArthur, you know, one-handed catch. He, Dane's just a really, really good college football player. He's going to play a long time in Canada. Good protection, and uh, again, we get a crack in the zone and a you know, great throw and catch. Uh, the offensive line, uh, I don't think played great, but they certainly played real well last night. You know, really close there to getting the sack, and I mean, a great throw and catch. I mean, you can see why he's a Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, he, he made some great throws last night, you know, under duress. Uh, so we got a linebacker and a tight end, and he, you know, he shakes us. Uh, again, you know, they're getting good protection. We're bringing some people who are having trouble getting home. Break down the open field. We let them get up the field a little too far right there. So they're right back down the field on us. And uh, they come out here with a boot. They fool our defensive end. And, uh, you know, Detmer's in the end zone untouched, and uh, it's a 7-7 game. I mean, they're uh, right back in there. Six minutes left in the uh, first quarter. Again, you can see excellent protection. Another really good throw, great catch. Larry Con Smith just, uh, you know, just finished out his career in, in great fashion. Uh, you know, just you know, played extremely well. You know, nice uh, catch and run right there. Good job on the option. And uh, Tommy Heffernan, you know, just really selling out. You know, Tommy really sold out in special teams, playing hurt. Uh, you know, really had a good game. Nice job by the offensive line, and uh, Jamal Farmer gets the end zone. So uh, we, we take the lead back. Rainbow's we'll answer back. Big factor in the game last night. Well, it sure was. You know, they're just so explosive offensively that uh, to be able to score points moving the ball is so critical. And uh, Kenny Harper had an outstanding game, uh, comes up with an interception. His uh, first of three interceptions. Again, you know, excellent pass protection again. And, uh, you know, good throw, good catch. He gives Dane a chance for the ball, and Dane comes back and gets it. And the protection, you can see when Garrett has a lot of time, it makes all the difference in the world. Another nice job. That's out of our power eye set. Uh, good blocking. Good double team there, and uh, Jamal's in the end zone. 21-7. Still in the first quarter. Long first Still quarter. Still in the first quarter. They come back on first down, try to go deep on us, and Kenny is in great shape. He's got a cushion, which he should have. The ball's overthrown, and uh, he makes a grab. And, and, and the offense does a great job coming in and answering the call right here and uh, getting more points on the board. Excellent throw and catch by uh, you know, Jeff Seidner. Certainly, Paul Johnson, our offensive staff, did a, a great job of preparation for the game. Get the option going again, uh, get the ball outside, and, and Dane cracks it for a touchdown. You know, really good blocking on the perimeter. Uh, just some real good team football. It was amazing uh, in last night's game. The term deja vu kept coming up and coming up again. It seemed to me, and it's, again, my personal opinion, Coach, the BYU came in with the same arrogance, and that's really the only word I can use here, the same arrogance on defense that they had last year. I thought there was very little change in their defensive scheme from the 56 to 14 loss last year, and the Rainbows were able to exploit it again. Well, they did some things that are very basic, very sound, uh, but the you know, level of execution has something to do with things also. So I, you know, I like to give our guys some credit. Oh, sure. Uh, Sure. You know, they lined up in some defenses that, uh, you know, have given us trouble uh, during the course of the year. Uh, similar schemes uh, in a running game that is shut down Air Force. So uh, they, they weren't unsound. I, I just think our level of execution was really good. Our pass protection was good. And, and sometimes when you, when you get it going early, because uh, I've been, you know, been there as a defense signal calling, caller, you know, you end up being a step behind. And uh, I think that's the kind of situation we got them in again last night, where you know, we were kind of one step ahead of them. So the Rainbows have a, a big lead in the first quarter. Let's go back to the videotape highlights of last night's game. A little bit of a high snap, and uh, good job of getting the, get the ball away. And we get another break here. Uh, well, I think we cause it. I mean, we, we, you know, we rake the ball out. 
I guess the uh, isolated replay showed his knee was definitely not down. A good job by the officials of uh, not being intimidated. Just an excellent throw and catch again. Too much time and man coverage and, you know, really a knack for having an idea where people are and delivering the ball really well. Devlin and Boyce work well together. Great throw and catch here. Again, we'd like to do a better job of hanging in there in man coverage, but certainly a lot of time when you're playing man coverage. Uh, you, you just don't uh, expect a quarterback to have that much time. So, so they're coming back. You know, they're a good football team. They're hanging in there. We slip here on the blitz. Yeah, but Kenny Harper comes up with a big interception uh, down inside. We get an excellent block there, and uh, we get the ball up the field. So uh, we dodge a little bit of a bullet there. Good crossing interception that time by Harper. Yeah, great job of catching the ball. Here we go back with the option. Jeff, you know, does a nice job of running, uh, good blocking on the perimeter. You know, option again. You know, and Garrett's doing an excellent job of getting that ball kicked. Again, good block on the perimeter, a uh, real you know, sizable game there by uh, Dane MacArthur. So just you know, moving the ball consistently well. Uh, and this is uh, Brian Gordon. Uh, Brian, uh, you know, hopefully will have a big future for us as wide receiver. Redshirt freshman has been catching the ball um, real well the last couple weeks and big touchdown catch. We're playing man coverage, and uh, you know Tony Pankey, based on the, on the coverage, was free right there, and just robbing uh, what we call the hole area, about 12 yards deep, and uh, you know, and, and they throw right to us. He does a good job of playing Detmer's eyes. He gets the ball back again. You can see how good the protection was, and Jeff stumbles there. Great throw and catch, and again, excellent protection, and, and that's just so critical. We felt we had an advantage here. This is something we, you know, we uh, we had in, and uh, we should have pitched the ball there. I mean, uh, that's an option play, and we we had the uh, kicker as a trailer, and, and that hurt because uh, we came up a yard short of first down and about three yards short of a touchdown. Mark Odom does a nice job of just continu continuing to compete and then knocks the ball loose from behind, very similar to uh, last year. So it's 35 to 14. We got a 21-point lead, but we had gotten stopped on fourth down on about the 40-yard line. We went for it, and then. Not getting any points when we're down there deep, uh, it was a little bit, a bit of a concern. But we just felt the way they're lined up, we had a chance to hit that option on them for a touchdown uh, right before the half. Were you confident going into this game? Did you know from the films that what you would see on the night of the game pretty much is what they've played all year long? Well, a, a good football team is not going to change radically. We didn't change radically. Like I said last year, I wish we hadn't come out in that uh, triple stack because... Uh, People remember that, but you, you got to go out and execute. I felt, I told the team before we left uh, for the stadium, uh, just a little more boost of confidence uh, if they needed that. The Miami-San Diego State game, uh, I thought was a real positive. I knew we we'd improved, but you're never sure how much. And uh, the fact that San Diego State played Miami so tough, uh, we had a tough loss down there, but San Diego State was an improved team as, a, as the season wore on. Definitely we were. We beat a, a Wyoming team with nine wins. Colorado State's a good, solid football team. We had a chance to win that, so I just felt a lot better about our chances to play them straight up uh, after watching some games on Saturday. We'll be back with the second half highlights of last night's victory over Brigham Young. See this line? Welcome back to the Bob Wagner Show, everyone. Rainbows have a big lead at halftime quickly. Let's go to the highlights of half number two. The third quarter begins, and the Rainbows right away are successful. Well, we come out with the option, and a uh, great block by uh, Jeff Seidner, and a uh, good block downfield, Larry Con Smith. And uh, you can see uh, Dane's got really good speed and uh, you know, makes, it makes a nice run, real nice run. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, we hit some plays, and against them, you just can't rest. You need to get as many points on the board as you can because, uh, you know, the old cliche ain't over until it's over. And uh, get Jeff down inside. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that was. Uh, I am, Coach. You are, huh? <laughs> but, uh, you know, great touchdown drive to start the second half. That really helped. This is zone coverage uh, at its worst. I mean, we're just dropping four, three deep zone, and they, they throw it underneath, and that's why you don't play a lot of that against them. This is disappointing here. We, uh, you know, we had our defensive ends, uh, you know, weren't, weren't reading their keys properly because versus that front, that draw trap shouldn't have been there. That, that really hurt right there. If Mark could have grabbed cloth, and then Kenny peaked a little bit in man coverage. You play good man coverage, you have to be really, really disciplined. 
and we are for the most part. We peak there, and we miss the tackle, and it's a touchdown. I mean, there's just not much margin for error against a, a good quarterback like Detmer or uh, Gabriel, for that matter. Again, uh, dropping the ball underneath to Smith, uh, coming out off the uh, mood. What happens? We come out of coverage here. Uh, you know, we need to stay in coverage back in the end zone and, and make Detmer run it in if, if they're going to score there. Uh, but we, we came out of coverage, and, uh, you know, he did a good job scrambling. You can see he's a good athlete. Yeah. Rainbows come out, and they score right away at the start of the second half. Then the momentum starts to change again, and BYU starts to come back, and they've come back so often during the year when they've challenged. They averaged 44 points a game going in last night. It's got to be concerned on the, on the sideline to keep the Rainbows going and not to fall down when you think about the Rainbows' performances in the fourth quarter that have cost them very close games a week earlier against uh, Colorado State. Well, you hope the players don't have that on their mind. I mean, because all, all you can do is play as well as you can play, and the breaks of the game go with you sometimes, they go against you sometimes. And, uh, but, you know, the worst thing you can do is start thinking about the week before or, you know, weeks before that or whatnot. You, you just got to go play. Play as hard as you can and, and as smart and make as good as decisions as you can as coaches and, and see what happens at the end. How do you control that, though? How do you control your own adrenaline on the sidelines? Because you cannot really affect the action of how your team plays, yet as a coach, you've got to feel it. You've got to feel the change in momentum and, and, the, and the ups and downs of the game. One thing that's important, not, not to, you know, you need to be up and need to be as positive as possible and, uh, and, and, and try to have a feel to see if you sense a mood swing. And then if, if you do, uh, you, know, you know, get in the guy's faces or whatever uh, from that standpoint. But I didn't, I didn't sense a mood swing uh, on the sideline. And, and as a coach, uh, all our staff, myself, I mean, you just try to stay focused on the task at hand and, uh, you know, certainly, you know, not you know, panic yourself. I think, you know, players can read that. You know, if, if you're concerned, if you're panicked, uh, if you're thinking, oh, my goodness, uh, this thing's slipping away from us, you know, people will feel that. BYU has come back to tighten it up now. Let's get back to the highlights of last night's win. Well, this was a, uh, this is a big throw and catch. I believe this is a, uh, this third down and a uh, big third down because we had uh, dropped some balls, had thrown some pretty good balls and we're struggling a little bit, 13-point game, things can change quickly, uh, fairly good protection, and it, it, this was a big throw, big catch. We get, uh, you know, Jeff down there behind her secondary again, and, you know, good protection, and then we knock it in the end zone. It's disappointing it took him so long to rule this a touchdown. I mean, a tight formation like that, I mean, he's laying across the goal line, but uh, we do get the touchdown. I felt better right here. I thought, well, but maybe... Maybe uh, all the breaks aren't going to go against us tonight. I mean, uh, that, that was really fortunate. Yeah, nice job of Larry Con Smith to stand after this ball. He comes around that defender, you know, to get the football. Uh, so uh, to get back up 21, that was significant. And then we come back and start playing better defense again. And, uh, you know, nice job uh, by Mark Odom. This is disappointing right there. We're trying, you know, we want to catch the ball on a fumble. You, know, you get both hands on it first. We slap the thing out of bounds. But we get it back. Come out here with the option. Dave MacArthur blocking for Jeff Seidner. You know, they did a nice job blocking for each other. Jeff's like on a bicycle right there. I mean, he went over to that guy and his feet kept turning. Uh, you know, he's, he just loves to play the game. Excellent run. Vintage uh, Jamal Farmer right there. Just uh, on his own, backside, cut back, uh, making someone miss. Again, you can see the protection. Oh, great time there. And, uh, you know, just you know, any good quarterback uh, with, with that kind of protection is going to throw the ball real well. And then uh, Dave McArthur got open on an option route and uh, good, good protection. It's a big kick because that, that really was significant. Now it's, now it's uh, four scores really to beat us. Darren and, Conn's uh, final field goal is the rainbow. And Garrett uh, does a great job on the option here. Garrett Gabriel, you know, reads the thing. The... Uh, Man runs up the field, and he takes it down the field. Shows good speed, you know, good ball security. Get the, get the thing kicked again on the option. Nice job of running, staying alive by Jeff. He gets that hand down. He's so low to the ground, he's easy to get that hand down, I guess. And uh, we come back on fourth. It was just so close that uh, we went for it on fourth down and uh, just faked the, uh, you know, uh, off tackle play up in there, and that's Garrett's kind of last hurrah as a UH quarterback, and you know, what a what a great way to go out. Very deserving, very deserving. Uh, you know, 
Tell you, I, I take 12 of those, 13 a year, but I tell you, that's like having a, sh a thin sheet of ice laid right on your back. That, that ice cold water hits that cotton shirt and it sticks right to your back. But, uh, you know, great win. Very, very good uh, performance last night uh, over a, a BYU team. What's the difference between a week against Colorado State, a week of frustration, uh, a, a disappointing loss, and then the great celebration of the final game of the season against uh, the fourth-ranked team in the nation last night. What's the difference? Can you account for it? Well, you, yeah, you know, one, if, if, if you want to just be real simple, you say turnovers. We, we won the turnover about a five to one. Uh, we won the game big. Uh, you know, we, we probably, we, we, we kicked and covered well. We won the kicking game. We got a fumble on that. Our offense played real well. Theirs played fairly well. Our defense probably played a little better than our offense, and our offense played better than their defense. You know, significant difference in turnovers. Against Colorado State, we ended up losing a turnover battle. And in the end, that really cost us. Uh, third down conversion. If we can convert on third down against Colorado State at the end, mm -hmm. uh, we run the clock out. It's the same deal against San Diego State a, a year ago. So it's like, as we say, I mean, uh, my cliche, I guess, you know, it's the, the game's very fragile. You know, uh, that game got to be a 13-point game. I mean, two touchdowns uh, is not much. But our offense uh, came out and scored, and then the defense went, went, went out, and, you know, they stopped it at 28. But uh, there's so many little things that happen in a, in a game that, uh, you know, even a game like that, we win by 31 and uh, a break here or there, and they could easily win the game. It was a tough selection, but our two players of the game are Kenny Harper and Dane MacArthur. Harper tied the UH single game record of three interceptions, and Dane MacArthur, in his last game as a rainbow, recorded over 200 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns. Bobby Curran talked to both players and some of their teammates afterwards. Dane, what a way to go out. Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, I was hoping that we beat BYU for my final game that. I thought we had a chance, but I didn't think that we were going to beat them by this much, and happy we did. Looked like there were a lot of opportunities for you tonight. Yeah, it was, I don't know what it was. Uh, they were, just what they were playing in that, we were able to get open and stuff, and uh, we got the ball a lot. They gave the softbacks the ball a lot. Looked like you found yourself matched up with linebackers on passing routes, and uh, was uh, no competition there. Oh uh, yeah, they were trying to play man, and they had like linebackers, and they had strong safeties and that, and uh, and the line was giving Garrett a lot of time to throw, and that's the big thing. You know, if you're one-on-one -on -one and, and the quarterback has a lot of time to throw, the receiver should be able to get open. Any reflections at uh, final game as a rainbow? What did it mean to you to play here? Uh, it was great. Uh, it was just great. It was before the game, I, I was almost crying when I came out here, before the game, and uh, I'm going to miss it, you know. It's like you don't think much of it now, but... I can tell that, you know, I'm going to keep thinking back about, geez, no more games here, you know. This is the last one. But it's a good way to go out. But Kenny, uh, you having a field day back there on the Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah, I was kind of hungry tonight because, you know, I didn't have any all season. So tonight was my last night. It was going to be the night or it wasn't going to be this year at all. <laughs> what about the effort by the whole defense? It seemed like everybody was really working on all cylinders. Yeah, we, we were pretty hungry. We were pretty fired up. You know, we had no quitting us tonight. Seniors want to win, we want to win. We all put it together and never, never let down, you know, never quit. The turnovers, you, you were able to get so many turnovers, five against BYU in the first half alone, that had to make you guys feel good. Yeah, that, that's what helped us get the victory. We win the turnover battle, basically most of the time we win the game, and so he was throwing them interceptions and we was taking them gladly. <laughs> Jeff, uh, obviously a huge win for the Rainbows and the 25 seniors that you've played with for a couple of years going out on a positive note. Yeah, you know, one of the things we wanted to do is pull together for the seniors and show them that, you know, they had our support and send them off with a bang. And being BYU, you can't send them off any better than that. Uh, you guys were able to move the ball on them right away starting out in the first quarter. What were you guys seeing out on the field tonight? You know, we, we were just coming together, you know, finally pulling it all together offensively, defensively. I mean, this was the game to do it. If there was a game we came together all together, then this is the game to do it. Tonight, the BYU defense seemed to give you some opportunities. Well, they did. We knew how they were going to line up. And, you know, it was just a matter of executing, same as last year. And, you know, we, we did the same thing. You know, the line blocked well, gave me time to throw it. The receivers, you know, they got open, they caught the ball. Anytime that happens, you know, things are going to, you know, things are going to be better. Some reflections on your career here? Well... It, it was something I, you know, I don't know what, you know, I, what to think about. I mean, there's so many things that happened so many times that 
you know, things were just changing. And, I mean, there's so much in football that you, you learn and you take away from the game. And, you know, I, you know, I, I just, I like the fact that, you know, I was able to be a part of Hawaii, able to beat Brigham Young, um, able to get the sack record, and just able to play with some, some really special people. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to take away most of them, we never quit. We never stopped playing, and um, we always did our best. The words of Mark Odom and the previous for that, the, the teammates. A giant ovation last night for the Rainbows in their celebration, the final game, and the victory over Brigham Young. Back with a final word from the coach right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Coach, you have 30 seconds. Sum up last night's game and the feeling of victory. Well, it was a great, great win. You know, finished with a winning record. Uh, these seniors, a special group, uh, you know, nine and nine, two and one, a bowl last year, a winning season coming uh, off a lot of adversity. We lost a third of our starters, projected starters, and a third of our top 44 after about four games into the season. Plus these guys, Mark Odom's going to graduate in four years, which is almost unheard of. Dane MacArthur, uh, Larry Consmith are going to graduate in December. Uh, right, right now, uh, we have an, another couple of seniors. So they, they're, they epitomize what college football should be about. Student athletes that go out and compete, uh, win games, do well in the classroom, represent the university and the state very well. And Sean Ching yesterday, six-hour law board exam before coming to the hotel. Before Took the, the law boards. He's a junior. Uh, he's hoping to get into the University of Hawaii Law School next year. Okay. That'll do it for the Bob Wagner Show. I would like to, to invite you to watch the Bob Wagner Postseason Special, 7 o'clock Wednesday, right here on KHNL Channel 13. Until then, celebrate, everybody. Big win over BYU. For the coach, I'm Jim Leahy. Thanks for watching. The news update is brought to you by Continental Airlines.